Welcome to the Undisputed Podcast. I'm your host, Jenny Taft. This podcast is the full show from today's episode of Undisputed from start to finish. They've got a busy slate, so skip Shannon. Let's get to it. Welcome to Undisputed. We are live from Los Angeles. I'm Jenny Taft. You with Skip Bayless and Shannon Sharp. Good morning, guys. Uh, how are you doing? Good morning. Good morning, Jenny. I'm doing well. Your man, LeBron James, wants <laughs> no part of these Clippers tomorrow night at Staples. <sighs> He's Did you see playoff P last night? He's clutching up again. What, no, what happened to the claw? Huh? What happened to Kawhi? They triple teamed him no, the whole game because Dude. they knew Toronto knows 13? just how deadly he can be. Le- Took six shots. LeBron come up a bum. Yeah. I ain't going to get you 18, 19. Yeah, well, he, he's still bumming out. <laughs> Unfortunately, right? yeah, we're going to have an update on LeBron, his ankle, how he's doing. We'll talk Cowboys. We'll talk a little Tebow. But you know what we need to begin with is it's getting messy in Green Bay. Mm-hmm. Aaron Rodgers time. With the Packers maybe coming to an end as more reports swirl about his unhappiness with the team. And a lot of people are chiming in. Tom Silverstein of USA Today, who has been connected to the team for years, said the Packers need to be ready to move on. And meanwhile, Terry Bradshaw called Rodgers weak for getting this upset about the situation. And former Packers quarterback Brett Favre said, quote, If he has a grudge, whether it be against the organization or a player or an arch rival, family, friends, he ain't budging, even if it's resolved. But he feels like they have one up on him. He ain't going to play. Shannon, some strong words from a lot of people. What should the Packers do here? Let it go. Move on. You drafted a replacement. That's why you traded up in the draft to draft Jordan Love. Skip, I mentioned this last week. Aaron, I don't, and Brett Favre would know Aaron Rodgers because he's been around him, talked to him in a private setting more so. I don't really know Aaron Rodgers. But just observing from a distance and seeing how he's handled some of the things in his personal life, Brett Favre is absolutely right. By the way, Brett Favre has experienced that firsthand exactly. because they've been at war. Exactly. Right? It, 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 even uh, Andrew Brandt, who used to be an executive mm-hmm. for the Packers, said Brett Favre camp just about every year would say, do you know what it's like to come to work with your replacement? Mm-hmm. So Brett is speaking, for, like you said, Skip, from firsthand knowledge. But dealing with Aaron Rodgers, Skip, it seems to me, this is how it normally works. And Skip, a lot of times I use relationships because I believe a lot of our audience have been through a relationship. And sometimes in a relationship, when one party feels they have the power mm-hmm. or they make the most money, they have the bigger shoe rating or whatever the case may be, Skip, yep. they feel they can talk to you any type of way and you'll accept it. The Packers felt they had the advantage and they could do whatever they want and Brett would accept it. Why would a CEO, why would Mark Murphy tell uh, uh, Aaron Rodgers, don't you be the problem, if he didn't think... He had the power. Why would they handle it in such a way? Skip, it was reported. Now, I don't know if it's true, but it's reported that the Bears gave Andy Dalton a heads up that they're taking Justin Fields. Andy Dalton. They should have made Andy Dalton go pick up Justin Fields from the airport. But they couldn't tell Aaron Rodgers. Like, Look, Aaron, we're going to probably going to move. If he's there and he's come to us, we're going to select a quarterback. We might even move up and take him. You could have given him that common courtesy. Skip, my college coach, Bill Davis, used to tell us all the time. He said, guys. I'm going to treat all of you fair, but I'm not mm-hmm. going to treat you all the same. Yep. And Skip, you've been around it long enough. You know certain players get treated differently. Yep. And at, at some point in time, love is like an eclair. Once it goes cold, it can't be reheated. And even Tom Brady had his breaking point. He got tired. Even It took him 20 years, Skip, to build it up. But he got tired of Coach Belichick treating him, number one, like 43 on the roster. He said, enough is enough. I deserve better. I know I can go somewhere where they'll treat me accordingly. But he left of his own volition. He did. Yep. Aaron Rodgers believed that he can go somewhere and they will give him the common courtesy of someone of his ilk deserves. Skip, I don't know how you repair this. I don't know why you're holding on to Aaron Rodgers when you drafted his replacement. When you take a quarterback in the first round, when you trade up to get him, you've told the guy that's already occupying that position. You're on borrowed time. Mm. When, the, when the Chiefs moved up to get Patrick Mahomes, what do you think Alex Smith was thinking, Skip? When Deshaun, when they traded up to Texas to get Deshaun Watson, what do you think the quarterback was thinking? So what do you think Aaron Rodgers, Aaron like, hold on, I'm a two-time MVP. I just, none of those guys went to the championship game. Aaron Rodgers said, I did just take the team to the championship game, mm. and y'all still think I washed up. So now he has the power. I take you back to the championship game. I go 48 touchdowns, four interceptions. I have the power. I don't like the way you've talked to me, and I was just waiting for this moment, Skip, and I told you, the moment he get that sledgehammer back in his hand, he gonna break some glass. Mm. Aaron Rodgers won out. I don't know how they repaired this, Skip. Too much damage has been done, and Aaron is a guy, Skip, you hold a grudge. 
He go hold that grudge until he gets up out of there. It's only a matter of time. Mm -hmm. Gudikins can say all he wants to. Uh, now, all of a sudden, we're committed to him long term to 21 and beyond. Yep. No, you weren't. Mm -hmm. No, you were not, and he knows you're lying. Skip, just let it go. Mm -hmm. Just let it go. TB, Skip, TB's my guy. I've known Terry Bradshaw. We're in the Hall of Fame together. And when we talk, and I don't get a just chance to, to talk to him much, but when, we, when I talk to TB, Terry Bradshaw, Skip, we really never talk about football. We always talk about his farm, his cattle. He have big cattle farmer, uh, bring us bulls, uh, bring us cattle, beef cattle. Mm -hmm. Skip, TB, you retired in 84. I retired in 2004. Things are different now. And I had to come to that realization, Skip. I'm like, but that's the way we did it. And that's the way we did it. Mm -hmm. And then I started hearing myself, listening to myself, I'm like, damn, I'm that grumpy old guy that everybody talked about when I was playing. Things are different now, Skip. Their players have more control now. It used to be the team had all the control. They controlled you until you couldn't play anymore, and then you ended up like Johnny Unitas, or you ended up like Joe Namath, but not anymore. Mm. T guys are not afraid to move. Joe Montana did not end up in 49ers. Emmitt Smith did not end up wearing cowboy color. Mm -hmm. Some of the all-time great skip ended up in another uniform that yep. we associate them with. Okay. It's over. You know it's over. I know it's over. The Pat need to know it's over. I, I don't know it's over, oh, but it, you, it, maybe you're saying you in general know it's over, but don't lay it on me. You 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 don't want it to be over because you know what's gonna happen if he's still with the pack and the cowboys. Well, you once played for the Denver Broncos. <laughs> you you became a Hall of Famer as as a Denver Bronco, later as a Baltimore Raven, but yeah. mostly as a Denver Bronco, yes. right? You went yeah. into the Hall of Fame as a Denver Bronco. I went back, finished up for two years in Denver. Correct? Yes. And you are hoping against hope that somehow Aaron Rodgers winds up your quarterback as a Denver Bronco, because right now you are stuck with Teddy Bridgewater and oh, Drew Locke. I Which told one you he want? wouldn't work. Which one you want? Okay, so maybe that'll happen because I think Denver would be first in line yes. if they open up the auction mm -hmm. to all comers. You know, come one, come all, right. make your, take your best shot yes. for Aaron Rodgers. Yes. And that well may happen maybe after June 1st. So let's go back to TB, the man you call him, Terry Bradshaw. <laughs> I also have known Terry Bradshaw for a long, long time. Back to our days, we, we used to play basketball with and against each other at Las Colinas Sports Club in Dallas, Texas, when he was first trying to get into this business as a commentator. Mm -hmm. And for our younger viewers, do not underestimate how great a football player he was. He was, because he was a great football mm -hmm. player. Four Super Bowls that he won. And he to lit MVP. up my Cowboys, Woo! especially in the second one, which was Super Bowl thirteen. Uh-huh. He threw the biggest Miami party on my <laughs> Cowboys, and those were two of the greatest teams on one field I have ever seen. So don't underestimate his credibility and the validity with, with which he speaks on this topic. Right. So I loved, and I'm going to reiterate what he said yesterday, or is actually two days ago, on WFAN in New York. He said that, that Aaron being upset shows me just how weak he is. And his point was, he's a three-time MVP— and he's worried about a guy they drafted last year in the first round. So Terry goes on to say, Pittsburgh drafted Mark Malone number one, which they did. It was the 28th overall pick mm -hmm. in 1980. It was near the end of the line for Terry, but, but he saw that one coming. Right. And in 77, they had drafted Cliff Stout. Uh, Terry can remember what the, he said, third or fourth round. It's fifth round, but fifth still, round. That, that he was coming also. So he said... That they have them coming at me from all angles. I embraced it because when we went to practice, I wasn't worried about any of those guys. They didn't scare me a bit. That's Terry Bradshaw's confidence. Once upon a time, early in his career, he briefly lost his job to Jefferson Street, yep. Joe Gillum. Joe Gillum. Tennessee State, Nashville, Tennessee. Yep. Okay. So then he goes on to say, here's what I would do if I were the Packers. I wouldn't budge. I'd let him gripe, let him cry. Retire. You're 38. Go ahead and retire. See you later. There's a big part of me that is so with that, like, go, Terry, go. I know it's old school. I know it's tough. But, but it's, it's what made Terry Bradshaw Terry Bradshaw. Mm -hmm. And there's a big part of me that says, just let it, like he goes on to say, hey, just let him retire and go do Jeopardy. Mm -hmm. And, and I'm, I'm good with that. You might be sort of what they call cutting off your nose yeah, exactly, to spite your exactly. face because you, then you wouldn't have anything to show for exactly. it. Uh, Aaron wouldn't have anything to show for it either if, in fact, he wants to go on playing football. And I'm not totally convinced of that. Mm -hmm. You know, he's got so many outside interests and he has all but campaigned to become the permanent host of Jeopardy. I don't think he'd be great at it, but that's, you, you do think he would mm -hmm. be great. So the mere fact that you, as a guy who was a, a, a guest contestant on Jeopardy, thinks that he could be a great mm -hmm. Jeopardy host... Okay, 
So he's got a shot there. That mm -hmm. would be a second career. He says he could do both at the same time right. because he had boiled it down to it would take only 46 days a year to tape all the Jeopardy episodes for a, a whole year. I think he was just throwing that out there for the Packers just okay. in case y'all act funny. Well, I believe that too. And I, I think he was negotiating against them, mm -hmm. trying to negotiate his way out of town. Right. Okay, so then that leads me to Tom Silverstein's piece that ran today in USA Today. Mm -hmm. Tom Silverstein has covered this team for more than 30 years, the Green Bay Packers. Wow. So he, he gets it. He knows. Mm -hmm. And he's been there through thick and thin. And he, he, the headline, just to, to give you the overall thrust of this, is Aaron Rodgers holding the Packers hostage to satisfy his grudges so Green Bay should be prepared to trade him. So Tom is a longtime diehard observer of this team. He, he's finally come over to your side like, it's over. It, <laughs> yeah. It's just too much. Yes. And he's blaming Aaron for it. Like he's just trying to to leak his way out of town mm -hmm. because even the Jake Kumaro story that we had a couple of days back, like he was upset about Jake Kumaro, who had played there for two years, played 19 games. He'd thrown him 32 balls. He caught 20 for 322 yards and two touchdowns. And he was acting like because they cut him and then he went to Buffalo and lasted six games, caught one pass for 22 yards and got cut. Mm -hmm. That 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 he he was making that like the end of the line. That that was the point of no return. Let's give me remember uh, the uh, the quarterback coach. They fired mm -hmm. Alex Van Pelt, mm -hmm. and they didn't tell him about it. And this is reported that he had a great working relationship mm -hmm. with Alex Van okay. Pelt. Well, well, that would matter more to me yeah. than Jake Kumaro. But skip at that remember, point. Remember, Aaron had just gone on a big national radio show. I forget which one it was. Yeah. And and just lauded Jake Kumaro as right. a guy that they, a diamond in the rough that right. they'd found, and he was becoming his favorite target. Right. But, but he's just a street free agent, right. you know. But Skip, you know what? Maybe maybe he's not that good, but Aaron Rodgers was able to get the best out of him. There are a lot of receivers, Skip, when they played with Tom Brady, they looked better than when they went somewhere else. They never made it. So Aaron said Jerry Cook was the same thing. We thought Jerry Cook had found a home in Green Bay. Yep. And guess what? Alan Lazard, they ended up cutting him. They ended up resigning him. But he's like, hold on, wait a minute. It didn't seem like anybody I like y'all want to get rid of. Well, Jordy Nelson was his favorite receiver. Yes. And, and they ended up cutting him. They cut him, and he lasted one year with the right. then Oakland, Oakland Raiders. Raiders and correct. that was the end of yes. his career, right? But so, what did you say the headline said? Aaron Rodgers is holding Packers hostage to satisfy his grudges. Thank you. So Green Bay should pr be prepared to trade him. I told you last year when they did this. I say if he ever get back in a power position, yep. he was going to do it. I have told you from the start. <laughs> Aaron Rodgers is the LeBron James of the NFL. He can be a thin-skinned, finger-pointing, blame-deflecting diva. And when he gets his back up on something, he is impossible to deal with. And I think if everybody really knew what had gone on behind the scenes with this Packers regime and Aaron Rodgers, it's probably so ugly but so petty that a lot of people would lose some respect for Aaron and maybe some sympathy for Aaron. Yeah. Because I think he is a, the all-time handful to deal with. Well, Skip, I think all quarterbacks are like that. All quarterbacks have a little Petty Ruxman or Richard Petty, whatever you want to Petty LaBelle. Because, hey, think about it. What's the difference between what he's doing and what, what Tom Brady did to get uh, Jimmy Garoppolo up out of there? Yeah, but that was the push came to shove. Why are you I mean, that's, worried about that's, it? Hold that's, on. That's, that's either stay or go, man. Hold on, wait He's a minute. He's about to be pushed out the I back just, door. I just want to know. Now, Terry said he don't have anything to worry about. That's that's, that's Tom Brady, five-time Super Bowl. Okay. okay, but Tom had already put him in the shadows. He'd okay. gone to gone to practice battle with him and, and beaten him out, quote-unquote, oh. not had any worry at all okay. about him. And all of a sudden, the handwriting on the locker room wall became clear that, wait a second— Belichick's going with Garoppolo. I, I, thought, I thought the job of the player was to shut up and just go play football. Don't worry about front, what, what front offices may or may not do. So now we can tell Aaron Rodgers, shut up, just go play football. But Tom Brady, you are well within your right to go upstairs, to go over Coach Belichick's head. I don't really see the difference. Well, how many Super Bowls had Tom Brady but won see, by that but point? You got, you got to be careful by evaluating, saying because someone – like, I get it, Skip. I get it. Like I said, we know this about quarterbacks, Skip. They're very sensitive. You talk about thin skin. Quarterbacks have the thinnest of skin. I've been trying to tell people that for the longest. But people tell me, Shetty, you don't know what you're talking about. I've been around him too okay, much. But, but it's okay for Tom Brady to, as you say, go upstairs. I think he went over to Kraft's mansion, he knocked did. on the door one night and said, hey – him or me, it's, it's come to that point where I'm either going to be gone or 
you're going to make sure that he trades Jimmy G right. one way or the other. Right. Which is it? We're, we've reached the point of no return. Right. Well, this is no point of, of, of no return because, remember, they have Jordan Love right now on the Aaron Rodgers plan. Okay, How well, long did it take Aaron Rodgers to win the job from Brett Favre? It three took years. three years. So let me ask you a question, Skip. If you have your guy, Skip, I don't believe they would have made the move had Brett Favre not kept waffling about I'm retiring, mm -hmm. no, I'm coming back. Okay. I'm retiring, I'm coming back. No, I think I'll retire again. No, I'm coming back. He was. And, and this was, and that's what, and, and, and um, Ted Thompson, I think, was the general manager of the time. He was. Says, enough is enough. He put his foot down. And so they moved on. Okay, you remember, have your they, guy. They had to completely rebuild Aaron's delivery from his Cal days under Jeff yes, Tedford. Yes. Completely rebuilt it. And it took three long years of him sitting, waiting, watching, learning to be ready to do what he did. He might have, let me ask you a question. Had Brett Favre not kept waffling about retiring, do you believe that he'd have started, he'd have had to probably wait another year? Okay, maybe so. But three, he was ready to yes. go because he proved he was ready to go. Okay, then. Well, you okay, got and I up. told you the other day, our man Lil Wayne told me that his ear to the ground on the Lambeau, Lambeau Field turf, that he's hearing that they have high hopes for Jordan Love, that yeah. they see a little bit of Mahomes in there, but maybe he's not ready or maybe, you know, it's like on the cusp of being ready. Well, it'd be pretty tough to throw him into this fire week one this coming football well, season. Well, no, you drafted him. You moved up to get him. Let him go. Okay. Turn him loose. Aaron says, if you believe he is what you thought he was going to be, mm -hmm. let me go and find out. Okay, but that's they're, what, that's they're what, only in year one of the Aaron Rodgers plan for Jordan Love. I'm sure they would like to make it two years kick him and then the say. Kick him out the nest. That's yep. what mama birds do. Mm. Fly. Or okay. something going to get you on the ground. Fly. So back to Tom Silverstein, the last point that he made is that all of these leaks have to be coming from Rodgers. The quote is, He's smart, and he has had his people in his camp leak the reasons he's angry at the Packers rather than address it himself publicly. It allows him a chance to later deny any of it was coming from him when it absolutely must be coming from him. So he has declared war on the Packers. That's why on draft day, uh -huh. it broke that he wanted out. Of course, that's it, it not was a accident. touche. Yeah, it was, exactly. I waited 365 days to stick it yeah, back yes. to you after you stuck it to well, me. Let me ask you a question, Skip. Who do you think leaked? Aaron, don't you be the problem. You think Aaron Rodgers leaked that, or did the team leak that? What's his Do name? You, uh, Mark Murphy denied that he said it. Yeah, exactly. So I don't know where it came so, from. So, so, so Aaron Rodgers... I don't know if they leaked it. I, I just think so, that reporter for the Bleacher Report knew. He was also a guy who'd covered the team So let me ask you a question. Time. Who leaked the fact that, that Aaron Rodgers was not consulted about the guy they were hiring? Who leaked that? Aaron, Aaron Rodgers? Aaron. Yep. They did. No. They say they did not consult with Aaron Rodgers. A Aaron said, no, they did not. But I think he started that ball rolling. See, you can't have it both ways. You can't leak information and then get mad when a player leaks said information. Mm. What you should have, you could have had, Skip, this is not to say it wouldn't have blown up the way it has, but you could have easily said, Aaron, we're looking at drafting a quarterback. Now, hope maybe we might have to move up to get him or one might fall into our lap. Yep. But we're looking to take a quarterback in the first round. Skip, if you do that and Aaron gets mad, okay, so be it. But at least you've given him the heads up. Someone of Aaron Rodgers' credentials. I believe he earns that. Okay. So here's what steams me, irks me, and ultimately amuses me about this whole mess. What? Is that Aaron Rodgers is so skilled at this that he has managed to deflect all blame off him for what just happened back in January at Lambeau Field that he fell to one in four in NFC Championship games. He has let down, it's, it's not tidal town anymore, it's tidal wave town because they keep getting hit by tidal waves and big playoff games. Yeah, look, I, I was one of the first to say Aaron Rodgers did not play well. He needed to play better. I believe he should have made the play. He should have run the football. So I was one of the first ones that did not let him off the hook for what transpired in the NFC Championship Thank game. you for that. But the fact of the matter is, is that when you look at the totality of it, They've drafted one skill player in the first round in Aaron Rodgers' tenure. Mm. Now, I don't really know, you know, like, well, we're, with the head Donald Driver, Skip, that's like saying they drafted Shannon Sharp to get, for John Elway. They yeah. drafted Shannon Sharp in the seventh round. Okay. Is Devontae Adams any good? So why did you take him in the first round if you believe that good? Mm. Is he not, what, top two or three? A lot of people think he's top one. Let me tell you what they did. Now, at the beginning of last season, what did B.A. Bruce Aaron, the head coach of Tampa, say about A.B. Tell me what he said, Skip. 
He doesn't fit our locker room. Mm -hmm. In the middle of the season, who was on Tampa's roster? And why was he there, Skip? Okay, and your point is? My point is Aaron Rodgers says, hold on. Heck, a guy can come from a new, dis a new destination. Go there and have some say about the roster. I've been here set 15 years, and you give me, you tell me to just throw passes and shut up? Tom Brady had won six Super Bowls. He had won nothing in Tampa. He went down there and changed the whole culture overnight. Skip, stop. He, he went and won Skip. the Super Bowl with Antonio let me, Brown. Let me ask you a question. He is the only did quarterback he? who could win with Antonio Brown. Skip, let and me he ask, did. Let me ask you a question. Had he won the Super Bowl when Antonio Brown had got there? My point is, he wanted A B. They gave him A B. He wanted Gronk. They gave him Gronk. They gave him, they made concessions to give him what he wanted. I'm not talking about Skip. What you do someplace else has no bearing on what you do here. Okay, but Aaron Rodgers does not belong in the same breath with Tom Brady. Skip. He just doesn't. Skip. Wait a second. Aaron Rodgers is seven and eight since his one long ago far Skip. away Super Bowl Skip. in the playoffs. Seven and eight. Skip. Is he accomplished? But his resume in the regular season says he should have the same privileges as Tom Brady. He's a three-time league MVP, as is Tom Brady. But to say that he's less than, okay, he hasn't won as much. But to say you're not going to give him any say or not going to confer with know, him. One, one guy's the ultimate, the greatest leader ever, and the other guy's the opposite of a leader. He, yeah. He's always the fire starter in the locker room. Well, he's always the problem. He's a type of guy that if you rub him the wrong way, and teams are the same way, they did T.O. like that. They, T, as long as T.O. was catching 14 touchdowns and 1,500 yards, everybody tolerated what he did. But the moment he couldn't give you those numbers, he never played again. So Aaron Rodgers is saying, guess what? Now I've got the power back in my hands. Give me something. I want out. I don't want to be here. You got Jordan Love. You say you got my replacement. Okay, let me move on. Mm -hmm. So I'm, I've come around to your side. Aaron <laughs> Rodgers is going on 38 years of age, and I think he is dramatically overrated in the postseason. And the postseason is all that matters to me. So given his hype, given the way that you stand on the table for him every, uh, just about every day on this show, mm -hmm. He is dramatically overrated in the big picture. So I say, go to the Denver Broncos and let's see what you got left. Of the 32 quarterbacks that's currently playing in the NFL, or the guy that just got drafted and may play, name three better quarterbacks than Aaron Rodgers currently playing in the NFL as we speak right now. Give me three. Well, we're talking about postseason now, right? Hell, most of them don't even get to a postseason. So the only okay. guys that can have postseason success is basically we're looking at Big Ben. You take Big Ben over Aaron Rodgers? No, you wouldn't. Would you take Russell Wilson? He has playoff success. Would mm -hmm. you take Russell Wilson over Aaron Rodgers? No, you wouldn't. So basically, it's down to Patrick Mahomes and Tom Brady. So you only that's two. The I two, said give me the, three. The two you just named, I'll take in the postseason over Aaron Rodgers any day or not. That's only two. Because he is a choke artist in the biggest game. That's only two. I said give me three. You can't. Mm -hmm. So Aaron Rodgers is one of the the three best quarterbacks in all of football. And he's going on 38, and he's got all kinds of off-field interests, and he wants to be the Jeopardy permanent host, Skip. and good luck. Skip. Good luck. Skip. Is he better than Drew Locke? I'll give you that. So you're telling me there are 20, there are 20 and nine other quarterbacks better than Aaron Rodgers currently in the NFL? Well, I, I'm just saying, I don't know if he's all that. And you know what you're going to have to give for him? If they just open this up to an auction, it's going to take your next two years first round we'll picks get that, to get we'll get that. Good. Yeah. Let's go. No mercy. Tim Tebow to Jacksonville rumors are starting to heat up. Jared Bell of USA Today explained that the fit may not be ideal, saying the distraction of having Tebow may outweigh the relationship between Urban Meyer and his former player. However, Tony Khan, son of Jack's owner, Shad Khan, and a member of the team's front office endorsed the idea, saying, quote, obviously Urban knows Tim really well, and Tim has got a great history of winning. Urban really believes he can help us, and I think it makes a lot of sense. <laughs> Shannon, are you... Are are you laughing? Wait, are you guys laughing? Shannon, would Devo help or hurt the Jaguars? What's he going to help him as team chaplain? Mm. Now, Maybe. I have a relationship. I know Tony Khan. I know Tony okay. Khan very well, Skip Bayless. How is that? <laughs> we met each other. Uh, we were flying out here about four, about four or five years ago, and we were sitting next to each other on the plane. Mm. Exchanged information, carry on a conversation. So we speak from time to time. Oh. Mm. So, By the I, way, he is the chief <laughs> football strategy officer for the Jacksonville yep. Jaguars. Yep. Okay. So uh, he's also, uh, Jenny mentioned he's the son. Yep. Skip, here's a guy that's been out of the league almost six years. And when he was in the league, he was a quarterback. And now he's switching position. 
I mean, Alden Smith came back after five years. You think Alden Smith could have switched positions and said, you know what, I want to play tight end. I think I want to be an offensive lineman. That's a great luxury to have, and that's why I tell people always, you know, be careful how you talk to people because you never know when you're going to ask them to do you a favor or need a favor from said people. Skip, let's be real. Tim Tebow has a hard time getting away from Tim Tebow, the professional athlete. That's what this is about. Tim Tebow has never blocked anybody except on a reverse, mm. and he's blocking cornerbacks. Tim Tebow has never blocked a, D a Michael Strahan, a defensive lineman, 280 pounds. He's never put his hand in the dirt and had to block somebody. Mm. This is, and, and the thing that, that, that bothers me is that someone that's waited their whole life is going to be shortchanged a position for why? Mm. Because the guy, the head coach, has a great relationship. He was his quarterback that helped him win two national championships, mm -hmm. and he's basically going to be given a position. Mm. That's what this is about. Tim Tebow has, has not been able to adjust not being Tim Tebow, the professional athlete. It's as simple as that. He's still doing speaking engagement. He's still having his gig on ESPN. That's a great luxury to have. I wish, hey, I don't know. Fuck, y'all going to hold my job if I go out and try to do something else? Y'all going to hold my job for me? That's a great luxury to have. But anyway, I wouldn't leave you like you know, me and me, me and you. Mm. But get help. Well, Tim doesn't do a daily show, so no, no, I'm just yeah. saying. Okay. I, okay. I, didn't, I didn't eat like three about three or four weeks. I was just thinking about doing something. But anyway, what are you thinking about doing? Yeah. I get back to you on that. Okay. Skip, <laughs> Skip the, the Jags took uh, in the fifth round Luke Farrell, uh, and he's a blocking tight end. Skip, look, we know what this is about. This is not about the guy's ability. Because to think that Tim Tebow all of a sudden that's never played tight end. And people say, well, Shannon, you moved from wide receiver. I played tight end my senior year in high school. Mm. I played tight end my sophomore year in college. Mm. So I was very, I was proficient in about knowing what it was like to have to block someone bigger than myself. But I had, you know, you have to adopt a different type of a mindset, Skip, as opposed to, opposed to like one or two plays a game. Mm. To now I'm spending the entirety of the game with my hand in the, the most part. Mm -hmm. 45 of my 60 plays with my hand in the dirt. How many times did you really try to block somebody bigger than you? Well, my job was, Skip, look, my job was to just make sure that strict. Look, I wasn't going to, no, if you try, tell me out there and say, well, Shannon, today we want you to dominate Michael Strahan. That wasn't going to happen. I might steal a block here or there, but mm. I'm, hey, that's not, what, that's not what I am. Okay. But I had a different mindset, Skip, but, you know, for me, I was almost a 500-pound bencher. You think Tim Tebow can bench 500 pounds? You think Tim Tebow know how to sink his hip, roll his hips? You know how he think how to keep a wide base, keep his hands inside? When they pull, you push. They push, you pull. He knows that. Mm. It's about, blocking is about desire. <laughs> you did not have high desire to block people. No, 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 no. That wasn't. But I knew that was a that was a part of my job because at early in my career, Skip, when I came in the game, everybody knew they bring nickel in. It was a pass. And so Dan Reed said, well, Shannon, you're going to have to get better at blocking because you're a tail, which means every time you come in the game, they know it's going to be a pass. So I need to be able to put you in the game and we do something other than throw the football. Yeah. So, Skip, we know what this is. Come on, let's be real, Skip. Mm -hmm. Nobody else is going to be able to pull this off. You're not letting a guy that's been out of the league for six years mm -hmm. come back into the league and switch positions and say, yeah, he can help the team. At what? He couldn't help the team at the position that he had. Mm -hmm. Remember? Really? Oh, I, I do remember. It was your Denver Broncos who were one and four when they threw him into the fire to get it over with. And all of a sudden they went on a roll and won the AFC West and won a home playoff game. And wait a second, wasn't it in overtime against Ben Roethlisberger's Pittsburgh Steelers yeah, it was. that Tim Tebow did this? Do you remember this? Oh, my goodness. Do you, oh, here do, it just is. to remind everybody. What? What? This is Demarius Thomas. He's loose. He's loose. He is going, 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 oh my gone. Game over. I'm on my floor in New York City rolling on the court. <laughs> Ernestine says, what's wrong? I said he just beat the Steelers in a playoff game. Skip. It's impossibly great. They teach you now. Every, every site, update your mm -hmm. resume every six okay. months. Skip, that was eight, All nine. Right. That was a decade ago. <laughs> and you still holding on to that. Okay, so here's the point. This is going to happen. Yes, I told and you it was. this will help the Jaguars under Coach Urban Meyer, who knows all about... Nobody knows Tim Tebow any better than Urban Meyer. He knows what he brings intangibly as well as tangibly. And this will help a young football team because, number one, 
They need somebody at that position. Right now listed number one on their depth chart is the immortal Chris Manhurts. You heard of him, Chris nope. Manhurts? Nope. I had not heard of him either, so I looked him up. He was undrafted out of Canisius. Do you know Canisius up in Buffalo? Oh, do, yes, it's, it's I've a heard school of it. that used to have a football team when Chris Manhurts played there. They no longer have a football team. So Chris Manhurts has bounced around. This is his fourth NFL team. He's caught a grand total of 12 passes in, in his career. He's 12 more than Tebow's six, caught. Six seasons he's been around. He's caught 12 passes in six seasons with one TD catch. He's listed number one on the depth chart. You just mentioned Luke Farrell. They took him in this past draft in the fifth round right. out of the Ohio State because Urban recruited him to Ohio State. Right. So Urban knows what he is and what he's not. He is nothing but a blocking tight end. Lance Zerline, NFL.com, projecting him to be a seventh-round pick. They took him in the fifth, and Lance says he's maybe a bottom-of-the-roster or practice squad player. What so, about Ty Laffer? Wasn't he there? Well, he's not there now. This is Chris Manhurts. So it's, it's Chris Manhurts or bust which is why they need Tim Tebow to do, to do something, to be an H-back, to be a gimmick player, just to give him six, eight, ten snaps a game where you do try to get the ball in his hands because he is an athlete, he is a runner with the football, and he'll do anything because he is a football player. I told you, he will play special teams. And you say what? you're a 500-pound bench presser. I don't know if he can bench 500, but but it's somewhere in the ballpark. Skip, he is a strong man. It's really it's really not so much about how much you can bench. It's how, it's how you use oh, that weight. I got weight. it. I got it. It's how you use the technique and understand. Because you got to realize, Skip, I was only 225, 228 playing tight end. I, I'll bet you Tim's 250. Yes, yeah, okay. yes, yes. But it's not the, it's not the size of the dog. Okay, it's the I size it. of the fight. Okay. But my question to you: You keep telling me about these intangibles. How do intangibles don't catch passes? Intangibles don't move defensive linemen. Intangibles don't pick up hot rocks. I don't know about that. I think they do in the end. So back in that immortal 2011 season, uh, a guy named DJ Steve Porter, shout out to DJ Steve, wrote a song for me, and it was called. All he does is win. And it was such a great song and music video that he created that it won the Webby Award that year. And the point of it is my point to you. All he does is win. If you give him a chance, give him opportunities here and there with the football in his hands, magic happens. And I love Jarrett Bell. He's our friend. He occasionally joins mm -hmm. us here on Hello, Undisputed. Jared. And Jared Bell was writing about what a distraction, what a circus Tim can cause, and that the circus would be more trouble than it's worth for Urban Meyer. I disagree with that takeaway because in the end, the circus creates, creates momentum. It creates energy and urgency, and everybody gets caught up in the locker room, in the circus, in a good way. That's what happened to your Broncos. And in the final five minutes of those games that year that he was the starting quarterback, he led the NFL in QBR because he just got deadly accurate with the game on the line. And the Broncos led the last five minutes in defense. Mm -hmm. And so we see that that's what goes unnoticed. Okay. And you, so Did he it, not raise the level of that whole team? Skill. All up. So, so I'm just trying to tell. Okay, he was that good. So he went to the Jets. He went to the Pats. He went to the Eagles. He couldn't make any of those rosters. The reason he's hanging on to this is because nobody ever gave him a chance they to win another job. To no. win another job. To actually no, no. start a game and say, "Can you play no, or not?" No, no, no. He's he, he was promised by Rex Ryan he would get a chance to start games in New York, and he started how many for the no, Jets? No skill. How about zero? Let me ask you a question. How many teams asked him to switch positions six years ago, but playing tight end or switching positions was beneath him? It was beneath him. I'm a quarterback. Mm. My lifelong goal was How to play quarterback. How would you feel if you had just taken a team to the playoffs and won a playoff game and people are saying you're a tight end? How would you feel? Hey, I'm in the How NFL. How would you feel? Skip, I switch positions. I want to be a wide what, what receiver. What if you made the Pro Bowl as a tight end and somebody told you, you know what? You should be playing right tackle. You'd say, no, I'm a tight end. I just made the Pro Bowl. Skip, I'm trying and to And remember be that year, Tim Tebow, very, he came very close to making the Pro Bowl. I said he'll never make a Pro Bowl when I said they should draft him late in the first round. They, couldn't, they, even, they couldn't even fix the vote to get him in the Pro Bowl. Mm. You know good and well. well go, go look it up. He came very close. Skip, the man lost his last, he lost, lost his last four games. He beat the Pittsburgh Steelers in a playoff game. They That's lose, all you need to lose, know. Winning game 7-3. Win, yeah. Come on, Skip. Who stop. led the league in rushing that year? Uh, Denver came from nowhere to number one yes. to lead the league in rushing. Yeah. Why? Because of ride and decide. Let me ask you That's a question. what he does. The last two years, who led the league in rushing? 
the Baltimore Ravens. Now, how many Super Bowls have they appeared in the last two years? Well, they had a shot at both of them. What about Tennessee? Mm-hmm. It was right up there. How many Super Bowls? Cleveland, right up there rushing the football. Well, You're not running yourself to a championship. Mm-hmm. You got to throw it. Mm-hmm. My only question was, what is it about now that you say, you know what? I'd be willing to play tight end when you wouldn't back then. Well, obviously, the, the league rejected him as a quarterback. <laughs> and so now he's got a guy who's a very close friend of his and a guy, as, as our man Jared Bell concluded, then again, Urban Meyer, who knows better than probably anyone about Tebow's magic, mania, and impact, may be just the guy to try this. That's it. That's why. It's a great fit. It's like, to use your, your chaplain reference, thank you, God. Yeah. It's like the heavens opened, and here's your opportunity to at least contribute to a football team. If you don't think fame, if you don't think attention is a drug just like hard drugs, just like alcohol, just like some of the hardest stuff, you're fooling yourself. You know it is, I know it is. Mm. Tim Tebow is addicted to the fame that being a professional athlete, there's nothing like it. No, he's addicted to the competition of being- Give the man that been competing in six years. Mm. What do you mean he's addicted to competition? He made the all-star team at double A in the sport of baseball. It's impossibly great what he did. You don't think that was competing? Let let this sink in, Skip. you say football rejected him. The Mets gave him an olive branch and said, okay, come try this. They did everything they possibly could. He couldn't make that. He said, you know what? Well, I think I'm going to go back to the NFL and switch that. And I, and I did it. I remember saying this. So when he doesn't make the MLB, what's he going? what professional sport yeah. is he going to try next? If this, if there's a reason why he's going to Jacksonville. There's a reason why no other team. Well, wait a second. He was in AAA last year, and the Mets were saying well, he's right on the cusp of making our roster. And why did he stop playing baseball? Uh, could it be a coincidence that Urban Meyer suddenly got the job in Jacksonville and he knew right away, I got another shot at the NFL? No, hit no 50. Huh? Was the reason why he, oh. he knew, was the reason why he quit Man, baseball? Make, making the All Star team at Double A. Do you know how tough Double A is? They took they took five guys from huh. every roster. Huh? <laughs> that what they, they took five that's guys from not, every roster. That's a lie. They took you know five it. guys from every yeah. roster. Skip, don't do that, Skip. Mm-hmm. Don't, well, he, don't. he made the all-star team. Skip, stop. Skip. And it killed you because don't. you couldn't you, you couldn't poke a hole in Skip. it because he was an Skip. all-star at double A. You 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 gotta give ask, him some credit. Let me, can I ask you a question? He hadn't played baseball in 12 years. Let me ask you a question. He hadn't played football in six years. Let me ask you a question. Mm-hmm. How many guys have made double A or triple A all-stars mm-hmm. that's never made it to the MLB? To major, to the bigs. Okay. They feel few, few, aren't they? Okay, but he stopped short. He was going to try it again this coming year. Mm-hmm. He got married. I don't blame me. He didn't want to ride the buses up through upstate New York anymore. Uh, oh, so that's right? beneath him. Well, King Griffin well, had to ride buses. Well, Mike Trout had to ride buses. That's beneath him. What he, you, you keep telling me. He was I, a starting quarterback in the National He ain't Bowl. playing in the NFL. That's uh, Major League Baseball. That's what okay. they do. They take the bus. Yep. So you telling me again. Uh, that's been, I'm starting to see a uh, theme here, Skip. Yeah. Oh. Well, the, the theme is that Tim Tebow is a football player. You know it and I know it. And if you put him on a football team, magic will start to happen in little big ways. Just watch. You he will me. contribute. And by the way, who wouldn't want to have Tim Tebow to be a big brother to Trevor Lawrence. Who wouldn't want that? Because he'll be no threat because he doesn't even play quarterback. Why? Skip, I'm trying to win. Skip, there are only 53 guys on the roster. Mm. I need a guy that's going to be able to contribute, run down there and buzz heads on special teams, do something. Okay. What's he going to do? Well, can he be better than the guy from Kinesius? Probably not. Tight no, end? no, no, he's not. He's not going to be better than a guy that's been playing tight end basically his whole life. Mm. You keep thinking Tim Tebow is Deion Sanders or Bo Jackson. The I didn't say that. The guy that could, could really cross over mm. and play professional sports yeah. at the highest of level. He's not that. Okay, we're talking about being an H-back for 10 or 12 plays a game. That's still, it. That's still, a, that's still a professional athlete, a football player. You try to minimize. Oh, hold on. You want to say? Hold on. You say age back tight end. You try to minimize my position. I yep, played that I position. I am, and I'm here to tell you <laughs> right here, right now. I'll take Tim Tebow as a blocker over you on your best day. As a blocker, this I'll take out. him. I'll take him on his on your best day. And it's all about <laughs> desire, <laughs> desire. He will have it. You hadn't. I tell you what. None. You ask any of my former teammates, would they? T- I get. I tell you what. I'll empty all my entire bank account if you find one teammate, one coach that would say they would take Tim Tebow blocking over me. Find one. Find one. 
I don't know if they'd go public with it, but there might be, there might be 50 of them. Find one. Uh, I can't do Unk that way by going <laughs> public. Know. But they're they, thinking, they, know, they know when Unk wanted to get down and get hey, grimy with it. Hey, when Tim Tebow wants to get down and get grimy, he's a football player. I tell you player. what, call Mike Shanahan. Call football Mike Shanahan. Player. Call Brian Billy. Yep. Call they Wayne Phillips. Yep. Call any of my coaches. If they think Tim Tebow is a better blocker than mm. old way to folk. Well, call Urban Meyer and see what he says. Skip, yep. I ain't got Ur- Urban, 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 hey. Urban, Skip, hold on, wait a minute. How many times you've seen Tim Tebow run over somebody with the football under his arm? No, no, no. He, he was a fullback no, no, no. playing Skip, quarterback. You ain't got no, see, when you block, you ain't got no fullback. You ain't got I no ball got under the arm. I know exactly you, what it he, is. It's, hey, that man right here. I got it. That you, is correct. Tim Tebow don't know what it's yep. like to move a man against yep. his will. Huh. I know what it's like. 250 versus 225, I'll take Tebow. I got my money on Tebow any day, See, any you, week. You, you let that side. Do, I, do you remember him training for the draft? He's pulling cars with. with Skip. Come on. I, you don't realize how many 250, 270 guys I had on the ball. <laughs> they just look at him. Man, they're a little old joker. The next thing you know, I got him up in the air. Oh, no. <laughs> I got him up in the air. You know what you the rep was on Shannon Sharp? Has no interest in blocking. That's what I always heard. I always heard. I nah, nah, nah. Shannon, you, you are that. not going to forget Call, this day. You know what? We're going to get Mike Shanahan on the show. I'm a little worried about How about we get this. Mike Shanahan on the show and we ask I'm what I'm a little worried about this, mm. Skip. I don't think okay. you're going to forget this comparison, <laughs> T-Bow to Shannon Sharp. Shannon, you handled yourself very well. I'm very impressed. <laughs> I'm going to save this conversation and move on to LeBron. Shape. Guys, LeBron James is reportedly expected to miss back-to-back games this week. To rest his injured right ankle. The King will miss tomorrow's highly anticipated showdown with the Clippers, as well as Friday's game against the Blazers. LeBron had missed six weeks with his ankle injury before returning for two losses this past weekend. And there's some concern he'll need a bit more rest before ramping up for the playoffs. So, Shannon, what does this tell you? LeBron James is not even close to being 100 percent. He was probably out there about 65, 70 percent. And the thing is, when you're dealing with this, and this is an injury that I've dealt with, um, the thing that I was able to do is that I didn't practice. I ended up just shooting the ankle up and playing. Well, Skip, you can't shoot a guy's ankle up every single day because basically well, every other day. So you can't you can't do that. But what he realizes that I'm not helping my team at the level in which I'm out here. That's not good enough. And it does not matter. Play in, play out. First seed, third seed, fifth seed. If LeBron James is not healthy, the Lakers aren't winning. They know that. Everybody that covers the game of basketball knows that. Mm. Everybody that watches the game of basketball knows that. Mm. If LeBron James is not healthy, the Lakers cannot win a title. It's as simple as that. He's not close to being healthy. So they're saying like, okay, we last played the other day. So let's see if we can give him a week. So he's going to miss Thursday. He's going to miss Friday. I think they play again on Sunday. Maybe they bring him back Sunday. Maybe they don't bring him back until the following Tuesday. They can steal some more time, get him some more recovery. But, Skip, I'm not surprised by this. This ankle, this injury is tough. You saw what it did to Christian McCaffrey. He missed the remaining of the season. We saw what it did to Michael Thomas. He missed eight weeks and didn't catch a pass in the game in which he came back. Michael Thomas, who once caught over 150 balls in a game, in a season. So... I know what LeBron is going through. This ankle, this this injury is really tough, especially for a guy that size mm. that's asked to move. His whole thing is being predicated on being able to get to the paint, being able to dish, and he's a shell of himself. I saw it when he first got there. You don't believe me? I text Steve. I said, Steve, he's not even close to being himself. Steve you, is your research, research guy. Yep. I said, he's not even close to being himself. Mm-hmm. And he's not. So hopefully this extra week will give him a chance to get closer, but <clears throat> the likelihood of him being 100%, I know he said he won't ever be 100% in his career. I think that was hyperbole. Mm. I think he does realize he's not going to be 100% this year. But without him being somewhat close, they got no chance, Skip. They got no chance. Mm. So help me out. Whatever happened <clears throat> to that storm warning that he issued a couple of weeks back on social media, a storm is coming. It is coming. You don't think that he had worked out with his team? You don't think he practiced with the Lakers before he posted that? You don't think they had at least gone up and down in what you would call scrimmages? Skip, let me tell you. Um, I came back, and I was out there practicing. I said, I feel pretty good. Because you know, Skip, I'm not going 100%, but I was like, man, I feel pretty good. And then come game time, mm. that ain't walkthrough. That's not, okay, Shannon, don't hit Shannon, don't do anything. I got to step on the gas. Mm. Boy, 
Man, it's not that I'm running like I got a flat tire. Mm. And if you ask him what it's like out there, I guess he, I guarantee you he'll tell you the same thing. Mm. Skip, you can't, you, you want to be able to step. I'm used to, I was used to putting my foot in the dirt and I'm up out of here. Mm. I'm putting my foot in the dirt and the guy right there. Mm. I mean, what the hell are you doing there? Mm. Okay, so I have a question. Yes. If LeBron James hadn't shot an air ball with a minute left against Sacramento in his first game back last Friday night and then missed the game winner, long back iron at the end of that game against Sacramento, a very embarrassing home loss. And if he hadn't not been himself, they got embarrassed by Toronto at home in the next game. If they had won both games, do you think he'd still be playing? No, I do. I don't. I think it was embarrassing to him. Maybe he wasn't 100%. Maybe he felt he was 92%. Stop, Skip. You but, know that man ain't close okay, to the 90s. Okay, well, now if I he was at, 90, he'd still be out there. Okay, now I look at the schedule, and here's what's coming. A storm is coming, and it's the rest of their schedule because they got to face the Clippers tomorrow night at Staples. And? And they ain't nobody. Yeah, they got embarrassed by the Clippers way back on opening night, and they're going to get embarrassed by the Clippers again. And by the way, did you see the Clippers last night? Toronto was just red hot right now, and they are a handful. And guess what? Playoff P said, you know what? I got this once again. We, can we see Playoff P just to remind everybody oh, what's, what's happening with the Clippers? This is with a couple of minutes left. It's a tie game, and he says, you know what? I, I, I got it. Nobody else wants it. I got it. Boom, up three, and that was basically the ball game. Thank you very much, playoff P. So that's what you're up against. Rondo actually had a rare bad game last night, and they were still just fine. The second unit is about as good as the first unit, and it had kind of an overall bad game last night, and they were just fine. They won that game against Toronto just the way they're going to embarrass you tomorrow night on your quote-unquote home Give me 10 state. points, then. No. I no, they're not embarrassing. I'll go head up for five cases no, right no, now. No, no, no. You said yep. they're going to embarrass us. Oh, okay. Well, you're going to get embarrassed. Then you have to turn around the next night, back-to-back, -back, and go to Portland. LeBron's like, I don't want any part of those Clippers, and I especially don't want any part of having to go up to Portland on back-to-back. -back. Well, then you got Phoenix on Sunday, Sunday. at home. Uh, guess what? Phoenix has won five straight and is suddenly edged ahead as the number one seed in the West. You want a part of that? I, I don't think so. Then you got the Knicks. Well, we know we talked about the Knicks with our man Michael Rappaport yesterday. What have they done? They've won, what is Nothing. it, 12 out of 13? Nothing. 12 out done. of 13. And so, here now, they so, come. so now we hype in April and May. Okay, well, I'm just saying this is what you have left because I am hyping this. The thing that LeBron wanted somebody fired for, the thing that he first suggested. because No, it's good. Stop it. Okay, well, he did first suggest the, the premise of it, the possibility of a play-in tournament. He just didn't want to be a part context. of it. Context. Okay, context. But the point is, you are in dire straits of falling into the play-in because right now you're only a game up on Portland. You're tied with Dallas. They have the tiebreaker. So right now they're fifth and you're sixth, but Portland's just a game behind at seventh, and you got to go to Portland on on Friday night. And then I just told you, Phoenix and the Knicks, you get one gimme, you get Houston at home on Wednesday, but then you have to finish at Pacers, that's no walk in the park, and at Pelicans. And they'll probably be playing for nothing but just a little pride, and I don't think you can win that game. Oh, David Pelicans. Griffin, uh, he had to take a shot. Oh, mm. forgive the NBA for trying to do something mm. that's fun and somebody objecting to it. Mm. Hey, you're not even in playoff games, so why are you worried about the fun that somebody else might be having, David okay. Griffin? The only reason you got a job is because of Goat James. Okay, well, Goat James better be worried about the play-in tournament right now, and he better save his team from the play-in tournament, but, but apparently he's going to duck the Clippers and... I don't know how long he's going to duck because there's a lot of ducking to be had here because there's high risk of embarrassment if he's not 1,000% in these games. LeBron, if LeBron James is, is, is healthier than what he displayed the, other, uh, the first two games back, I'm not worried. Mm. Well, is he coming back at all? Is he going to play any in this regular season? Yep. You believe that? Yep. Well, I I you talk about him like he's, he needs a wheelchair, and, and then the next breath you say he's coming back. Well, if he's as bad as you say he is, he shouldn't play any of these games and just try to suck it up and be well, ready if he, for if the he's playoffs. If, he, if he's that bad, he shouldn't play at all. If you don't play in the regular season, you shouldn't play in the postseason, right? If you're hurt, you're hurt. I don't know. Is he that hurt? When he said, I'll never be 100%, I, I thought that is classic excuse planting for the rest of your career. No, I always have an excuse. No. I'm never going to be 100%. Skip, I said that was hyperbole. Okay, I got it. I thought it was too. But I also thought there was method to the madness because he wants everybody to think, well, I am in year 18. First, he wants to say, I've had the greatest year 18 ever, but did he, did he I'm, lie? I'm now mortal. Did I'm, he lie? I'm human. Did he lie? 
Well, he was on his on the way to having it when he had played the most minutes in the league. And I kept telling you, Shannon, that this is crazy. This is self destruction. You can't play that many minutes. You can't lead this league in minutes in year eight. So, so, so why James Harden get hurt? Why KD get hurt? They weren't playing the minutes. So know, why they get hurt? They're not Iron Man like your guy is. I've no, said I'm just saying. Man. So why they get hurt? Why Giannis get hurt? Why Kawhi get hurt? Why Paul George missed 13 games? Why Joel Embiid miss games? Well, why do you throw them in the, to the same pot with this guy? He's Be the ultimate Iron because Man. Because I'm saying. Injuries are a part of professional sports. They happen. He's been one of the few guys that's been able to dodge the big injury. Two of the last three years, he has not been able to dodge, mm -hmm. even though it's not a huge injury, didn't require surgery, but the groin injury. It cost him, what, 15 games. This injury has cost him 20-plus games. It's going to mm -hmm. cost him more. So what, what, are we, what are we talking about here? Well, we're talking about the play-in tournament. That's okay. what we're talking about. Are you ready for it? It is what it is. Okay. You don't have Schroeder, I'm assuming, for the rest of the regular season. Probably not right? 10 to 14 days. Protocol, so. right? Right. right? Okay. So no LeBron, no Kyrie Schroeder. So what do you have left? Well, you, you we sucked it up Denver. you shocked Denver. Did we have another day? No shock. Yeah. You shocked. Denver took you lightly. I don't think that the Clippers or the Trailblazers will take you that lightly. They didn't take us lightly. Yeah. We just went out there and played. Did we had okay. to do. AD was aggressive. Okay. I'm expecting a big game from Drum. Drum, who gets in the way more than he helps. Going to give it to Zoom. I told you. I, I bet he gave it to Zoom on Thursday night. Really? Yeah. Okay. And there's double, another, double. There's another guy named Demarcus Cousins who's also the backup. And guess who's almost back because he's practicing? Big surge. Iblaka. Here he comes. He just I got a three-headed he three he monster. He just want to dress nice on the yeah. sideline. He ain't trying to play you no basketball. What? He looking like Shaft over there last night. He, he looks pretty good. He got, he got, that, yeah, yeah. Hey, that all-black level. Yeah, yeah, that's what I'm saying. He got, there, he got there shafted. Yeah. He ain't trying to play. He ain't trying to play no basketball, Skip. Oh, really? He ain't trying to play no ball. Uh, did we just get that on tape? Because yeah, you got to eat those words in the Watch what we do to... Uh, zoo bots on Thursday night. Okay. Drum. Uh, uh, double double. Somebody's about to boogie on your head. Boogie don't want to see drum. Yeah. I'm thinking 15 and 15. Boogie don't want to see drum. Did we get that on tape? Mm -hmm. Thank you very much. AD for gonna motivating be my squad. AD gonna be eating. Yep. Really? Yep. Okay. Well, he, he better move drum out of the lane so he can eat a little bit more. Hey, we, 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 back, we back up a little further, mm -hmm. and then we're going to put him down the block and let him have yep. a, a zoo box. So we have five more cases of Diet Mountain Dew. Bet on five and two, said Shannon Sharp, yep. that the Lakers have seven games. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven games left, and you say five, five and, and two. two, and I feel pretty good about that. Thank you. You're not going to feel good after we win yep. this one. Thursday. Okay. Well, you don't have the quote-unquote goat, right? That's all right. That's all right. Now, 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 when you come here on Friday, don't come here with no excuses. When, don't when come here with that sad that bet, face. You were thinking deep down in the depths of your psyche, Braun will be back. No. He'll be back. No. I got this. <laughs> yeah, you thought Braun would be back for the Clippers no. and Portland. I knew Braun was going to come back. Okay. I knew he wasn't coming back. Well, okay. You knew? I don't, Skip, I told you he's going to miss This is going to have to be the upset of the century for you to win this. Ain't no upset of no century. Yeah. <laughs> Seriously. Of <laughs> the century? Well, five and two with well, no LeBron or no Kyrie against that. Or Kyrie century. Schroeder. I'll remember you said that, that, that Skip. Yeah. No mercy. Some people may have been shocked that Patrick Sertan and J.C. Horn weren't available for the Cowboys to draft last week, but the front office wasn't caught off guard at all. Stephen Jones says the team was prepared for the top cornerbacks to be off the board by the time they chose, and that most of the conversations around the scenario involved them taking Micah Parsons as a backup plan. So, Shannon, are you surprised the Cowboys admitted they wanted one of the two corners here? No, let's go. The three highest-rated defensive players... In, in, in no particular order, Patrick Sertan II, J.C. Horn, and Michael Parsons. Now, some people might have had Parsons number one on their board. Some people might have had Sertan. Some people have, might have had J.C. Horn. But I think universally regarded, those were the three top defensive players. Okay. Now, huh, top three defensive players. We need a defensive player. We would like to get our hands on one of the cor cornerbacks. Now, Ooh, we looking like maybe maybe Carolina might take a quarterback. That that means hey, we got a chance. We pick a ten, Skip. So if Carolina takes a quarterback, we gonna have we gonna have our choice. Either we are gonna get J.C. Horn or we get Pastor Tan. Now the Broncos they might take a quarterback too, cause I mean I know they got Trey Bridgewater and Drew Locke, but come on guys, y'all can use a quarterback. So that way, if Carolina and Denver, we got our choice. We get J.C. Horn, we get okay. Pastor Tan. And your point is? My point is, they took both of those guys. Now, the number one defensive player on the board. That's what now, they said the other day. Michael Parson was the number one defensive player on their board. That's what now, they either, said. Either, either, either they, they lying said that they, Thursday night. Right, either they're lying then or they're lying now. 
Thank you. <laughs> so, for me, Skip, if you, the top three defensive players, two are off the board, you need a defensive player, and the one falls in your lap, even if you got J.C. Horn rated ahead of Pat Sertan, if somebody takes J.C. Horn, who you taking, Skip? Patrick Sertan, right? So, if the other two guys are gone, guess who you taking, Skip? Ta-da! It's not that complicated, Steven. I mean, it's, it's simple math. The three top-rated defensive mm -hmm. guys, two are gone. You need a defensive guy. Yep. You took the third one. Now, I don't know how Michael, M Michael Parsons mm -hmm. going to feel about that yep. being, you know, the, the second, not the first, not the second, but the third option. Thank you. How Thank he you. feels about that. Skill. Now you're hot. <laughs> now you got it. That's something y'all going to have to deal with later that in is time. correct. But I think, Skip, if he goes in there and plays like I believe he can play, they'll be glad they made this selection because I think this guy has, he has, all pro. He has Pro Bowl potential. Not to say these other guys can't, but this guy, I believe he'll be a difference maker that the other two guys can't be that play currently occupy that position. Okay. I got all that. Here's my biggest takeaway <laughs> from this story that I read about Stephen Jones quotes on his radio show in Dallas. He Texas. got a radio show. He's got a radio show. Oh. It pains me greatly to admit. <laughs> that Stephen Jones is turning into Jerry Jones, <laughs> like father, like son. I never saw this coming in a million years because I knew Stephen Jones way back when, when he was just the son, when he had just finished playing football at Arkansas <laughs> as a backup safety. I'm pretty sure he got the scholarship. I don't even know if he had a scholarship because of his <laughs> father's influence at Arkansas. All that money he don't put it in there. That is hey, correct. On. That is correct. But he was a backup safety. I think he got to play a little bit. Mm -hmm. The Stephen Jones I got to know in 1989, the first year that Jerry owned the team, mm -hmm. was a young man who had his father's smarts because Jerry is a shrewd operator. Mm -hmm. Stephen had his smarts, but Stephen was look before you leap. Right. Stephen was measured. He was stable. He would ponder. He would gather information. Then he would go. Right. And Jerry is quite. Jerry young. going. You think about it later. He's just gonna go. <laughs> so I always thought, hey, if it comes to to pass that that maybe he inherits the ownership and general managership of this team. He'd be pretty great at it. You were thinking Steven's going to be the voice of reason. He's yes. going to be Jerry's conscience, the good, the good because little angel. he always has been the <laughs> yeah. voice of reason. And yes. You know all the classic stories? Mm -hmm. The Deion Sanders story about they actually got in almost a fist fight where Steven had to push Jerry up. He calls his dad Jerry. He calls him Jerry. Push him up against the wall because he's going to overpay for Dion, and it finally worked out, and all they did was go win another Super Bowl. Right. That was the third and the final Super Bowl. Right. And you know the Johnny Manziel story that Steven saved Jerry from himself and the <laughs> franchise from, from not having a Zach Martin, who, as you say, perennial pro bowler and a probable Hall of Famer Absolutely. alongside you up in Canton, Ohio. Yes. Okay, so we get all that. I don't get any of this because this is Steven on his radio show. He has a radio show, and I think it's only a couple of years old where – Stephen always avoided the limelight in the first couple of years, and now he seems, to use your term of a couple of topics back, he is addicted <laughs> to the limelight. And he is spilling his guts about their draft process for one reason and one reason only. He is pounding his own chest publicly about, I want everybody to know just how involved I was in these decisions as they were right. made on the fly. Because he is now the quasi-GM as his father fades closer and closer to retiring, to backing away, right. to fading into the sunset. Or, God help him, I'm knocking on wood, leaving this earth at some point. And Jerry does talk often about his mortality. He does. Okay, so here we go with Stephen Jones just blurting, gushing to, to, to improve his stock in in listeners' minds about just how much football he knows. And like his father, he has a compulsion to convince you he really knows football. Right. He played a little college football. Jerry played a whole lot of college yeah. football. He was a starter on a national championship team at offensive guard. Mm -hmm. You got to give him that. Yeah. And I've always thought Stephen knew football a little better than his father knows football, mm -hmm. just in feel and in right. sort of insight and be, to be able to see it before it happens. I, I would value Stephen's opinion that way. So why do you need to announce publicly, to admit and acknowledge publicly 
that we knew the scenario existed. We discussed it the last two days ahead of the draft that both corners could be off the board right. by the time we pick. Right. And that matters what? Because you tried to sell us on Thursday night into Friday that Micah Parsons was number one on defense on your, your board. board. That's that what you he said. was the fourth ranked defensive player. Well, I don't think that's possible if that's you, you were admitting that you targeted one or the other corner, and I believe it was in that order. I think they wanted J.C. Horn in right. part because he was coached by Will Muschamp, right. who is the best friend or one of the best friends Dan of Quinn. the new D.C., Dan Quinn. Mm -hmm. So it was probably J.C. Horn, who obviously went to Carolina, and then it was my guy, Patrick Sertan. I've been pounding this side of the table for Patrick Sertan, right. and he's off the board right the ahead of you, and I tweeted something that you can go look up on my timeline, <laughs> a bunch of symbols that, that equaled a word I can't say, because that just tore my guts out. Right. And yet, students, we were prepared. Well, he says we were prepared because we had talked about Micah Parsons as well as a couple of other players. Remember, Mel Kuyper was really high on Rashawn Slater, who went the next pick to right. the Chargers. Chargers. Mel Kuyper gave two A grades for the draft to two teams, Miami and the Chargers. Mm -hmm. Why? Because the Chargers took Rashawn Slater, who could be an instant right. Pro Bowl left tackle right. out of Northwestern. Mm -hmm. And what did they do in the second round? They took Asante, Asante Samuel, Samuel Jr. Samuel Jr. Mm -hmm. Okay, go look at my timeline. What did I say when the Cowboys took Kelvin Joseph? I'm like, what? In the second round, you took Kelvin Joseph when Asante Samuel Jr. was just sitting there and he goes three picks later? It, it's like made to order because what did I love the most about Patrick Sertan? Bloodlines, mm -hmm. like father, like son, right. because his father was a Pro Bowl corner. Well, so was Asante's father. Yes. And and, and it's, I just love that. I, I love I love it that your big brother was Sterling. You know, I, I love it that you you had that. Right. You 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 had that example set right. for you. You you knew that your bloodline had gone to Green Bay and broken through and been a great player. Skip, it helps your mentality. It does. I don't have to get a coach. No. I got a brother that played. Got a brother. They don't have to go get a coach. They had a dad they that played in the NFL okay. and played the exact same position so he can teach you the techniques and, and that it you... it feels like it's your birthright. Yes. Like, like you were yes. born to play this position because mm -hmm. your father played it at the right. highest level. Right. So I, I'm like, why wouldn't you take Asante Samuel? So then it slays me again yesterday. I see Pro Football Focus, your least favorite website, but they rank next year's Candidates for Defensive Player of the Year. Number one on their list was Micah Parsons. Right. That's your guy. Mm -hmm. and, and I'm like, good. Here we go. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Number two on their list was Asante Samuel Jr. And I'm thinking, we could have had the top two candidates for Defensive <laughs> Player of the Year. They could have vied for Defensive Player. They could have competed right. internally for Defensive Player of the Year all year. Maybe Asante picks off seven passes next year, and Micah Parsons leads the team in tackles and makes the Pro Bowl. Right? right? Well, well, okay, so Stephen, why would you do this to Micah Parsons? Right. You're saying we had two targets ahead of him that we wanted, and we lost both of those. Right. And then we actually had a group of three players we were thinking about at number 10, and, we and obviously, him. and we settled on Micah. <laughs> okay, well, I love Micah. I, I love him as much as you do. I would have taken the corner because it was a little more need-based, right. and I'm just a big fan of Pat Patrick Sertan because I like his football character. I, I think he's a cornerstone that you could plug in at one of the corners, and he's going to make 10 Pro Bowls. And you can trust him to become a leader of your defense. I don't know about Micah because he's got he had an off-field issue and he's got some big ego issues going on. That can all channel into right. Pro Bowls. Right. That can work. That can be star power. Skip, if you wanted the corners that bad, why not move up? Okay. If and, you believe if he you talked believe about that, he just said the price was too high to pay. And he said the other problem was. They believed that those two teams were in love with their players, that mm -hmm. Carolina was in love with J.C. Horn and that Denver was in love with Patrick Sertan. And I don't doubt that a bit. When you're in love with somebody, you're, you're going to require a steep price to trade back and give that player up. Uh, yeah, I would. And okay. for the right price, I'll get out of love with that. Okay. I'll get out of love with that okay. player. All right. so, because now, if, 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 if it's true that now, if I got three first-round picks, Skip, if I got you know two next year and two and one the following year, okay. So Green Bay, I got three first-rounders and maybe a backup quarterback for you. Could I interest you? Okay. So I think the Broncos, because they probably they might have to in order to get Aaron Rodgers, Skip, you might have to include you Pat might. Sertan the you second. You just might. So I don't doubt that. <laughs> so okay. you know it might be a situation that the Broncos like, hey, to increase the you know the pot to entice Green Bay. Okay, okay I got sure. it. Sure. Okay, so I ask you. 
What purpose was served by these public comments I, by Stephen Jones? The, it got you weird. It helped you do what? Get you look, got, got Michael Parsons looking at you like, oh, I was like, Skip. I was like, like fifth yeah, down your list? Yeah, yeah Skip. This is not a, they, they make it, he's trying to make it seem like, well, that's Mike Mamula. You didn't reach. You got the, you got one of the top three defensive players that fell in your lap and you got an extra third round pick. So consider you got Michael Parsons and a third round pick, Skip. Yeah. It, if, this, if this dude, because the projection is, neither one of the corners has a higher ceiling than this kid. Okay. So if this kid hits his ceiling. Okay, I got it. You're right. And I immediately tweeted that Michael Parsons was a pretty great contingency plan. Yeah. Because he was. He was contingency. So I think I was correct about that because he's admitting that. Right. But, but again, you don't need to admit it no, because it, I want to now believe he was number one on your board, right? 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 Because no that's purpose, all that matters. No purpose is served by them saying no, that. No purpose is served. But, that, but, skip, but you skip. My grandfather tell my brother now, association brings on assimilation. He's been around Jerry so much, what? <laughs> He's turned into him. <laughs> well, don't they always say you turn into your parents yes, at some point? Yes. He's been around him so much, now he's <laughs> he's going goofy Jerry. <laughs> he got a, I, I didn't know he had a radio. I thought he was on Jerry's radio show. No, he's but got, no, he his, got own. his own radio. Okay. This yeah. is my owner of the future. <laughs> yeah, yep. I, I don't know. He's going to be just like the owner of the present. <laughs> a lot of talking. Well, you do learn from So you best, know exactly right? you what you get. Parents. No mercy. Lonzo Ball scored 33 points in the Pelicans' win over the Warriors last night, tying his career high that he set just within the past week. Meanwhile, Lonzo's little brother, LaMelo, put together another dazzling performance in his return from a wrist injury, dropping 23 points in a win over the Pistons that kept the Hornets in the hunt for the eighth seed in the Eastern Conference playoff race. So, Shannon, I imagine dinner between these two would be interesting. Which brother will be the better NBA player, Lonzo or LaMelo? Skip, it looks like LaMelo's going to be a star. <clears throat> Lonzo showed flashes every now and then, but every night I'm impressed by the younger brother and what he's been able to do, especially in the offensive end. He could shoot the ball better than I thought. And Skip, coming out of college, Lonzo was known as the, the passer. He can't hold a candle a lot. The Melo, Melo's the better passer. He's the better shooter. He scores at a higher clip. He's 16, 6, and 6 as a 19-year-old, uh, and Lonzo is 14, 5, and 6 in year four. So I'm going to take, take the baby, bro. 6, 8. He's only going to get better. He's he's this good at 19. I can only imagine what he's going to be like when he's Lonzo's age. Mm. When he's Lonzo's age, he's probably going to be an all-star. He has that kind of ability, Skip. This, this kid has the – he looks special to me. The pass that he made Sunday, Skip, that underhand pass from damn near uh, the full length of the court. Yep. I'm not so sure very many guys would even attempt that, let alone be able to pull it off. So I'm going to go LaMelo because I believe he has a higher upside just based on what I've seen, the little sample size that I've seen. I don't know if I've seen this from Lonzo. Now, I love what I saw from Lonzo last night. He had a horrible shooting performance on Monday night, mm -hmm. and he bounced back in the biggest of ways. Yep. He took the last second shot. He took it upon himself like, nah, I'm better than that. So he did show me something, but I'm going baby bro on this mm. one. By the way, could we see that last second shot? It was 26 <laughs> seconds left. An 18-foot step-back jumper by Lonzo Oh, Ball. one foot. Can you believe this? I never thought I'd see the day. Look at this, guy. That's for the game right there. That, that, was, that was the game winner. Take that with you. Wow. Interesting. Can't I, I didn't know he this. had that in him. I didn't know. And he whipped it clean. Yeah. Take okay. that back to the locker room, Kent Bazemore. So, I'm going to hang in with Lonzo because... <laughs> I believe Baby Bro is actually more advanced in basketball than Lonzo is because <laughs> Lonzo's growth has been stunted by his predicament that he got thrust into when Magic Johnson proclaimed his, 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 his jersey. Uh, jersey would hang up in the rafters at Staples as the second overall pick to Markel Fultz that year. Right. Or Markel Fultz. Boy, he's had a rough run. Yeah, ride. rough, yeah. Whew, he's gone again. So the point is... That was when LeVar Ball painted the biggest target on Lonzo's back in the history of rookie targets on back. Mm -hmm. He said he's already better than Steph Curry, and Magic <laughs> just blessed him, knighted him right. already, you know. And, and here we went, and remember the first game, Patrick Beverly just terrorized Lonzo at Staples and then pointed to LeVar up in the stands. This is for you. And I think every point guard he faced that year said, this is for you and mm -hmm. this is for you and this is for you. 
It was a rough ride. Somehow he and Luke fell apart immediately. Then LeVar publicly was all over Luke right. Walton. And now LeVar's all over Stan Van Gundy in New Orleans. So the point is, I, the, the baby bro has had silver spoon in his mouth all the way, even though he had to pay more of a price because he went to Lithuania and then he went to Australia. Mm -hmm. But it was great for him because he, he was playing pro basketball. Yep. And it, it, it matured his game a lot faster because when he got to the NBA, it didn't seem to bother him one bit. Right. Only in the last couple of months has Lonzo Ball finally come out of his shell and become a man right before your very eyes. And he has recreated himself. He has completely changed that shot from here to here. Right. It is now completely conventional. And would you believe that Lonzo Ball, I never thought I'd say this, is making 39% of his threes. Would you believe that effectively he outshot Steph Curry last night and scoring yeah. 33? Would you believe that in two of the last three games, he scored 33 points? Right. So he is starting to realize his potential right before your very eyes in ways that the baby bro, is. He, he realized his right out of the box because he had no... N nothing hanging over his head, no expectations. But here's to speak the thing, of. Skip. You said even Lonzo has come out of the shell. Yeah. He shoot his rookie year. He shot like 29, 30 percent from the three. He's shooting 38, 39 percent from the three. So he's gotten better. Can you imagine what Lamelo's going to look like when he gets better? Yeah. Except Lonzo <laughs> couldn't make 40 percent of his free throws. Now he's an 80 percent free throw shooter. So I think he's on the rise. And look at their stats. Their their stats are like mirror images mm -hmm. of each other. Like Lonzo right now is 15, 5, and 6. Lamelo is 16, 6, and 6. Mm -hmm. And it's 39% from three versus 37% for mm -hmm. Lamelo. And from the field, they're about the same. They're 80% for Lonzo and 79% for the kid from the free throw right. line. So they're like mirror images. And it was funny last night. Lamelo scored 11 in the fourth quarter, and they needed all 11 at Detroit. And two clutch free throws. He did. That just feel it. Okay, he did. Mm -hmm. But guess what? Lonzo scored 12 in the fourth quarter against a pretty hot Golden State yeah. team, and he made all four of his free throws down the stretch in the fourth quarter. So they had mirror image games even last night. Yeah. So they're, like, weirdly similar to each other, except to your point, I give you, baby bro's about an inch taller. Yeah, and he's three years younger, Skip. Maybe yep. four years younger. So can you he's, imagine? Because yeah, 19, I think, because what you got, Zoe is 23, right? Mm -hmm. So yeah, they, it's four years. Yeah. It so is. yeah, Skip. When he when he gets when he gets uh, Zoe's age, it's curtains. Okay, but I don't think that Lonzo can't hold the candle to him as a passer. I just think there's more whipped cream in the kids' yeah. game because he he's having more fun playing. But that's that's what Zoe was. I mean, everybody's like, oh, Zoe's a passer. Yeah. I mean, we thought Lamelo was going to be the scorer, and he can score. I believe he's a better scorer than that. Now the only difference is. I think Lonzo is a better overall player, Skip, because he plays both ends of the court. Melo, if you notice, Skip, they get in certain situations. They take, I mean, they take Melo out for defensive substitution, bring him back in when they get the ball. They now do. he's gonna have to get better at that, Skip, because you're gonna want to keep him on the floor because you're not gonna always get a, a side out of something like that. Yeah. So you're gonna always want to try to have him on the floor. But but Lonzo right now is a better overall player. I just don't know how much longer he's gonna be able to fend off Melo because Melo's coming. He's, he, he's special. Lonzo has been a far superior defensive player because oh, yeah, he yeah. can stop. Yeah, he, yeah, he can yeah, take yeah. people on the perimeter and shut you down. But this year, that whole team is not playing defense hey, for Stan like, Van, and I don't know what's happening. It's like they're revolting against Zoe him. Zoe got smart. Zoe say, I see all these guys getting max contract. Ain't none of them playing defense. Mm. I see Ingram. I see Jason Tatum. I, I see Darren right. Fox. I see Donovan Mitchell. And ain't nobody playing no defense. Let me score some points so I can get me because one of these 20 million. <laughs> right now in defensive win shares, Baby Bro is actually ranked a little higher at 190th than Zoe is at 197. Yeah. So just in sheer win shares, he's he's a little higher. He can steal the ball. He 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 won't lock you down right. face to face, right. but he'll oh, roll yeah, yeah, and yeah, get yeah, his yeah. hands on the ball. He long. Skip only Rudy Gobert get paid to play mm -hmm. defense. Everybody else, you better be able to put the ball in the bucket. That's who they're paying. So Zo like, man, I'm finna get me one of these big paydays. But I like Melo. I, I love what I'm seeing from his hey. kid. And his dad said his dad said the, the baby boy is going to be the best. He always said it. But Lonzo, to me, has been tortured psychologically where he just he, he, he's often looked like he's not having fun out there. Right. The kid looks like he's having a ball, but you know, so to speak. Because you know right? why, Skip? Because he went to a team and it says it's you. Hey. He goes to this B.I. and it's Zion. I so he's it. like he's the third option. Melo is the first option. 
and remember, they went and got little Bledsoe to be their right. point guard, too. And, and so. think about it, Skip. Every time, what does he always hear? Mm -hmm. Trade. The Lakers, this whole while here, trade. Guess what? They, trade. Are they going to trade? Now they're thinking about signing and trade this offseason. He's like, I just want to get somewhere where they want me. Let me. I can just go play, and I'm not the, I'm not the, 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 the speculation or the source of all these trade rumors. Every yeah. time a trade comes up with my team, I'm I involved agree. in it. I agree. And remember... Baby bro has a better coach because that James Borrego, he's yeah. the Popovich disciple. Mm -hmm. He can coach. And right now there's You got sitting, it in for Stan Van. I like Stan Van. You like it? Like Stan Van. Do, do you see what's happening with all that talent? They're 30 and 36. They're in the ten, they, you know, they're they're two out of the ten they seed. They the won't play. listen to Stan Van and play defense. He's been well, trying to that, get y'all to play defense. Point. Well, they're listening to James Borrego because right now they're 32 and 33, and they're in the eighth seed. They might have been in the but they were in the what four, the fifth or the sixth seed before Melo got hurt. Yeah. So I loved what the kid said last night on the local Charlotte telecast. I was watching the game and in the post game yeah. interview, he puts on the headphones and he's talking and and he was asked by the interviewer, well, you're throwing so many overhand passes. Did, did you play baseball at all? And he he said, now my brothers both play baseball, but I, I just hooped. And that's all he's ever done. <laughs> yeah. He just hooped. Yep. And, and that just summed him up. All he's ever done is hoop. Yep. And he loves to hoop, and it shows that, that it is a joy to play basketball to him. It has not been a joy until maybe the last month or so for right. Lonzo to play basketball. Well. I think he's going to get somewhere he's going to be happy. And they, you know, I they keep so. talking about trading the man. Yep. He's playing well. I, I'm happy that he's playing better, but I'm going to take, I'm going to take a okay. baby. All right. Baby? I'm hanging with yep. I'm taking Melo. No mercy. Well, guys, here's the situation. Aaron Rodgers' time in Green Bay may be coming to an end, and everyone has an opinion on who shoulders the blame for a possible divorce here. While many are quick to point out Rodgers' prickly personality as the main issue here, it doesn't change the fact that Green Bay has never been ultra-aggressive in either the draft or free agency to give the three-time MVP a full array of offensive weapons to win another Super Bowl, and he's been vocal about that. So, Shannon, who is most to blame for the situation? Oh, I'm blaming the Packers. Uh, Aaron Rodgers is not without fault. Skip, it's been reported this morning by Bob McGann of The Athletic that Aaron Rodgers mocked Brian Gunnikins in team group chats calling him Jerry Krause. Now, I didn't, I didn't know you. You know Bob McGann. You say he's been around the Packers for some 40 years. Yeah. So he's very knowledgeable. He's really tied in to and this for order. For those who don't remember the last dance, Jerry Krause was Michael Jordan's right. GM, and Michael despised because him. He, and I guess he's calling him Jerry Krause because he believes it's about him and not them. Mm -hmm. Which Jerry Krause believed it was like, I'm doing this. Y'all ain't really ain't doing anything. Skip, look, the whole problem, there's... You can trace it back to a lot of things. And some people say it's about Kumaro. Some say I've been reading reports that he got upset. They were going to re-sign Jerry Cook, and they let Jerry Cook go. And they ended up signing Martellus Bennett for more money, who ended up saying, well, my, I'm hurt. And then he got out of that and went to New England, won a Super Bowl, yada, yada. Mm -hmm. There are a lot of things. But I believe a lot of it can be traced back to when they fired his, his, uh, his quarterback coach, Alex Van Pelt. I believe that started because that was the first time that I actually heard him speak out and said that he was disappointed that he was kept in the dark, that they were getting rid of him. So now you start with that, and then you come all the way to, to taking uh, the quarterback in the first round, trading up. Skip, like I said, if you know somebody, Skip, if you're in a relationship, you know Ernestine got certain quirks. You try to stay away from those. Mm. Ernestine knows Skip Bayless got certain quirks. She ain't going to come barging in the room when he watches sports. Mm. She knows that. So to keep... I to have no quirks. She has <laughs> many. Not, not, no. <laughs> Go ahead. I've been dealing with you yeah. 240 days coming on five years. And I got 240 <laughs> quirks. <laughs> yep. Exactly. Yep. She's been dealing with me for 15 years. Yep. 16 probably. Mm -hmm. So Skip, if you know that, you know a, a guy has a certain demeanor or a person has a certain demeanor, you're like, okay, let me try to stay out of that situation. Let me... Aaron... I know it's not popular, but we're thinking about taking a quarterback. And if one of the guys that we like is there, we're going we're gonna to take him. We might have to even trade up, but we just wanted to keep you in the loop because this is what we think about. Mm -hmm. yeah, like I said, Skip, now I don't know how true it is, but I, I read that they told <laughs> Andy Dalton, we're going to select a quarterback. Skip, that's Andy Dalton. Mm -hmm. You giving Andy Dalton, the guy that just got there. Yeah, but they paid him a good deal of money for that. Well, how much you think they paid Aaron Rodgers over the course of the well, year? I got it. Just get, just, just keep him in the loop. Yeah. Now, Aaron hasn't handled this the best. I don't believe you should allow someone to hold your feelings hostage. 
Aaron has not forgiven them for all the things that he's, the ways he feels he's been wrong. Yep. And this is what we know about Aaron Skip. The little bit that we do know, as Brett Favre says, he will hold a grudge. And it doesn't seem to be letting it go. No. And I don't know if he's going to let it go. It's a, it's a tug of war. It's basically saying, like you said, it's like him or me. Yep. Do you want to con be publicly? Because if you fire Gudikins, basically you're saying, Aaron, you're in control. You're in control again. And you've done everything you possibly could to seize that control from him. Mm -hmm. That's why you took Jordan Love. That's why you hired a head coach and didn't tell him. That's why you fired his, uh, his quarterback coach and didn't tell him. You wanted to seize some of the control because you felt he was getting too much of the control from your organization. And you wanted to look, you're a player. We run the show here. It's not going to end well. Okay. There's so. enough blame to go around for everybody, Skip. But I just think the Packers, given the circumstance that you got a guy like that, you have to handle those guys with kid gloves. You just do, Skip. Okay. I'm not saying it's the right thing. That it, I get it. But you just, you just do. Okay. I, I hear you. But I have a question for you. Yes. I, obviously, both sides deserve some blame. In the end, I believe Aaron deserves far more blame than the Packers do. But, but here's the question. Let's do the hypothetical. Okay. Let's say on draft night two years ago, as they're on the clock and yeah. they realize they, they have a trade in place because you never know until it falls into your lap. Correct. Can, will, will that team trade with you so you can vault up into the first round to take Jordan Love? Yep, it's going to happen. Right. You are on the clock. It's 10 minutes that you have. So maybe five minutes into your 10-minute period that you have, you say, oh, my God, we got to call Aaron. If you call Aaron and he's sitting up in Malibu, kick back, what's he called? Drinking his sleeves of tequila, tequila right? Tequila, yeah. Okay. He used to be on that scotch. We scotch, tequila okay. Now. Tequila, okay. And, and you say, you, you tell him what? Hey, Aaron, we're about to draft your replacement. Is, is well, that Skip, what you do? I, no, no, would, Skip. Would he have liked that more? No, no, Skip. I believe that you go into the draft. You say, Aaron, if things break our way, we're probably going to take a quarterback in the first round. We don't know definitively. But if it, if it would, would, would that soften the blow anymore? I believe it would have. How? Believe, because, Skip, you give him a heads up, he doesn't feel like he's blindsided. Skip, it, it, Skip let, let me, it's still going to hurt. It's like in a relationship. If you tell a party, I want to leave the relationship as opposed to doing shady stuff behind the person back and they finding out. That's what happened. They went shady. Mm -hmm. And then it became public. It was TMZ caught the story and saw, you, and saw your significant other out with somebody else. She could have just told you. It was going to hurt the same. Mm -hmm. But at least you would have had the heads up. At least he would have had the heads up. But they didn't do that. They tried to be shit. We're thinking about replacing you, and if it falls in our way in the draft, we're going it. to take your replacement. That's an awkward conversation Skip. to have with Skip. that diva. Skip. You don't you don't <laughs> you don't phrase it like that, Aaron. We're taking the guy that's going to replace you. Aaron, we're looking to take a quarterback in the draft. Skip, you know it's all about presentation. Skip, sometimes the food ain't even good, but they present it in such a way you're like, I want some of that. That look good. Mm -hmm. You just like you can like, oof. Ooh, the presentation was A. Mm -hmm. The taste is a F. Skip, that, it's all about presentation, how you say things. Like, you, you presented that to me. You're like, you know what? I thought you were going to, you know, hey, you know, you were the good tight end. Oh, I take Tebow. I'm like, whoa, wait a minute. You were presenting As a it. That, 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 you, you, go, you were presenting it. It started out good. It didn't end well. <laughs> you always warned me about context. You have yes. to remember what the context was. Yes. So I'm going to remind you where we were a year ago. Yes. The context was not good for Aaron Rodgers one year ago because less than a year ago, it was June 8th of 2020, your favorite website, Pro Football Focus. Right. Did a top 50 players in the NFL, and they yes. left off your man, Aaron Rodgers. Right. And what was their logic in doing that? You did not love it, but right. their logic was, Rodgers has become ever more evidently part of the problem in Green Bay, and his own team spent the offseason laying plans to minimize his role in 2020 and replace him beyond that. Right. Rodgers finished the regular season, this is two years ago, as the number nine ranked quarterback in the league by their grading yeah, system. Yeah, still top 10. Yep, and he was just 17th in their grading system from week eight onwards, okay? So my point is, I kept telling you, for five straight years through, this is going back through 2019, mm -hmm. for five straight years, his numbers had fallen in QBR, 
and in passing com completion percentage. Right. Completion percentage. They had gone down, 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 down. Okay, so they had gone 13 and three that year, but even you admitted it seemed to be a fraudulent 13 and three. And they wound up in the NFC Championship game at San Francisco, and Aaron stunk it up once again in a championship game with a QBR in that game of 33 on a scale of zero to 100. It's his worst QBR in any playoff game, and that made him one in three in championship games, and he just now fell, as you know, to one in so four let, so, in championship. So let this sink in: a guy that Pro Football Focus had ranked the ninth had the ninth best had the ninth best season as a mm -hmm. quarterback, went to the NFC Championship game, and his teams tried to replace him. Mm -hmm. And that same team, as they tried to replace him, the same the, the same uh, publication said he was, he was outside of the top 50, mm -hmm. and he wins the MVP. Now, let that sink okay, in. It was a great bounce back. Hold on, it was a touche. I, I give you when that. Have we, when have we ever seen a player rank that low? When the, so either he, was that, either he wasn't that bad or they were terribly, terribly mistaken in their no, judgment. I don't think they were mistaken at all. But he had won two Skip. MVPs before. But Skip, so let, I'm trying to figure out how can a guy have the ninth best ranking as a quarterback mm -hmm. in all the football and be outside of the top 50? You told me the quarterback is the most important position. You right. said quarterback should occupy the top 20 position. I, I, I do oh. agree with that. I would have had him in my top 50. But again, he was just 17th ranked from week eight on. So the whole back end of the schedule... He he was the he wasn't even average. He was a little below average. I mean, but think of, but let that sink in, Skip. They say the guy's not top fifty. He threw twenty six touchdowns with four interceptions and had a team in the NFC Titan Championship mm -hmm. game. Okay, I got it. But down, down, down had come his stats, and they were screaming, aging, aging, aging. Time to move Skip. forward. So they said we've got to move forward. Skip, but see what, what the thing that y'all do with Aaron Rodgers is y'all take him at his absolute apex. And you judge everything off the season in which you went 46 and 5. If you judge Patrick Mahomes on 50 and 12, well, he's going to be, his stats are going to come down, down, down. Okay. We never did that with Brady. We never did that with Manning. We never did that with Drew Brees. We never measured them by their best and kept them there. Because if we did, Tom Brady has had down, down seasons okay. after that 5,000, uh, that right. 48 touchdown, 5,000 season. So I believe that Aaron Rodgers' attack on the Green Bay management, and it has become an yeah. all-out attack through leaks. Through yeah, leakage, it's, a cyber, like it's this. a cyber attack. Okay, it's a cyber <laughs> attack. I'll give you that. It's all about blame deflection because he is a shrewd operator, and he knows that he is now one in four in championship games. Right. And in those five games, he's thrown nine touchdowns to only eight interceptions. Oh, nine look, to eight. You know what, Skip? Yeah. That's all the more reason you should get rid of him mm -hmm. because he can't win the big game. Mm -hmm. So why would, you, why would you want to hold on to a guy that's blame deflected, can't win the big games? Mm -hmm. Why would you want that guy in your locker room? Okay, but have they done <laughs> him wrong? When I look at all the pro bowlers that he has been able to play with and they've been acquired through the draft or free agency or d different ways that they, they had to sign these, but I'll just read a few. If we start back when Aaron was the starting quarterback mm -hmm in 2008. Charles Woodson, Nick Collins, Al Harris, Clay Matthews, Greg Jennings, Tremont Williams, Chad Clifton, John Kuhn, B.J. Raji, then Jeff Saturday, Josh Sitton, Eddie Lacy, Randall Cobb, Jordy Nelson, Sam Shields. I, I can go on and on all the way up to DeFonte and Bakhtiari and T.J. Lang and Ha Ha Clinton Dix, Mike Daniels. Then they got Zadarius Smith, Kenny Clark, Jair Alexander, Aaron Jones, I mean, it's, these are all Pro Bowlers. They all made the Pro Bowlers mm -hmm. playing alongside Aaron. Maybe you could say, well, he helped them get into the Pro Bowl, mm -hmm. and I'll give you some of that. Right. But, but he's been surrounded by a lot of talent. I don't think they've done him wrong. I, I don't think they've let him down. I think he's benefited from Ted Thompson and, and also from Gutekunst. And well, I, I think that they, for the longest time, Skip, they would not go into free agent market. Mm -hmm. They wanted to develop their talent. They did. So for every Jahir Alexander who's yep. been exemplary, they've had failure after failure after failure. It wasn't until they started going to free agency. They got a Charles Wilson. And, they got a the, Darius Smith. And the Julius Smith. Pepper. Yeah, yeah, Pep. Okay. So prior to that, Skip, they tried to develop. Well, Everybody else like, well, you, we, this, we, we got a guy like this. You got a guy like Aaron Rodgers. It's basically all in every year. Damn developing. Okay. But I don't think Gutekunst is bad at his job. He might be bad at public relations. He might be bad at how he's 
not kid-gloved Aaron Rodgers. Right. I get that. I still don't know exactly how you break the news to him that we're about to draft your replacement. You just That's tell him. You just skip. Yeah, it is. Anytime you've been in a relationship for an extended period of time, it's a tough conversation. <laughs> Nobody wants to be replaced. Yep. So it's a tough conversation that you got to have. If, Anytime someone, your, your replacement, Skip, it's not easy, especially when you're the one that's being replaced. Now, when the shoe's on the other foot, we've all been replaced or replaced someone. Mm. It hurts a little more when you're being replaced. Mm. I get it. Been there. Done that. Been on the other side also. But it's a tough car. It's a conversation that we go into it. I'm going to be straight up with you. I need you to be straight up with me. Let's keep it buck here. Mm. He might have been upset either way, but I yes. feel like this version just yeah. felt like he was not in the mix. I need we to talk to my family. Bronco, here we come. No mercy. Sunday on FS1, the stars of NASCAR go old school with the throwback race from Darlington. Catch some of the most iconic rides as they hit the track for the Goodyear 400. It all starts Sunday at 3.30 Eastern on FS1 and the Fox Sports app. I like it. Well, the Patriots selected Mac Jones 15th overall already, and it has people talking about who will be the starter week one for the Patriots. Cam Newton re-signed with the team in March, and Bill Belichick backed Cam as the starter, but also left the door open for competition, saying, quote, Cam is our quarterback. Whatever time Jarrett or Mac are ready to challenge and compete, we'll see how that goes. So, Shannon, who starts week one? Cam or Matt? I believe it's going to be Cam Newton, but I do not believe he'll be given the privileges of playing as bad as he did in stretches last year, Skip, and being able to maintain his job. Coach Belichick has said Cam's the starter and someone's going to have to beat him out for that job. And, I, and that's what Coach, Coach Belichick loves. He loves competition. And it doesn't matter the position. You don't think just because you got drafted or you got a big salary, Coach Belichick will move on from your butt. And I, he keeps a fire lit up on the, all of his players because they know, Skip, ain't no guarantees here. He'll eat, it's not his money, he'll eat Mr. Kraft's money and keep it moving. You see how he drafted those guys? Drafted two guys in the third round, replaced them already. Mm. I'm sure Mr. Kraft wasn't happy about that. So what I, I believe, Skip, I believe Cam Newton starts the season. And as long as he's playing well, they're winning. He'll continue to be in there. Mm. But I don't believe he has the leash like he had last year because there were stretches. He played really bad and kept his job. I don't believe that happens this year. He doesn't play well for a, a period of time, maybe three, four games. I believe Mac Jones is going to get that job. And by the way, Cam's QBR last year would rank 30th of 33 qualified quarterbacks. Correct. Not great. Right. Okay. So you told me for several weeks on this show that Mac Jones was the best of the rest of the quarterbacks, mm -hmm. right? Of yeah. the other four up, uh, yes. down from Trevor Lawrence down. Mm -hmm. You had Mac Jones, and you also thought he was the best prepared to start immediately. Yes. And you might think he's better prepared than even Trevor Lawrence. Is it close? Is it's it close. It's okay. close. All right. So why wouldn't Belichick just say, I got my guy. He fell in my lap at 15. If he's that guy, just play him the way they played Peyton in Indy well, right away. Well, well, Peyton didn't have they, – they, they, if I believe if Cam wasn't there – and you got Steady, and you got Brian Hoyer, I believe now it's a different, but that's a different set of circumstances than having Cam there. Most of those guys that start right away, Skip, they, they remove it. If you remember, Skip, um, Carson Palmer, he didn't start his rookie year. Although I remember Cam starting because he just lit that league up. But Skip, you, you do realize they, uh, uh, Jimmy Clausen was the guy. Mm -hmm. So they got rid of Jimmy Clausen. Okay. All right, but but you could see Mac Jones starting from day one. It's just you're in a tough spot because you love Cam and you love Mac. I do, right? but I, the question is, do I believe Mac Jones is more ready to be a starting quarterback right now than mm -hmm. Cam Newton? No, I don't. Mm. No, I don't. Here's what I can't put two and two together and get four in New England. How do you tailor an offense to Cam and then you have Mac Waiting, not not in the wings. He's got, like on the edge, like he's looking over Cam's shoulder, ready in game four, five, or six to jump in and start. Right. How do you remake the offense on the fly for Mac Jones? Because that would be the old Brady what, offense. Well, they did right? it. Well, they did it with uh, with uh, Lamar Jackson when he was there with uh, Flacco. We remember yeah. Flacco. They they they. But they, then they just they junked it and they, went with exactly. Lamar. And so, guess what? Once Mac becomes a starter, a lot of the things, a lot of the plays that they run, the quarterback draws and things of that nature, they yep. won't be running. Skip, you remember how different the offense looked with Jimmy G as opposed to Tom? There were a lot more bootlegs 
There were a lot more waggle yeah, passes. I don't than, think it was quite as dramatic as no, it no, this no, change. No, it, but I'm saying, so you tailored the offense to the, that best fit the skill set of the, the quarterback that's playing at the time. It's not, Skip, like I'm saying, there are not going to be no wholesale changes. It's not going to be he's going to be running Carolina's offense, and then when Matt get in there, they're running a completely different offense. Yeah, but what's weird to me is Andy Dalton's in Chicago, and, and I suppose he'll start for a little while. Right. In place of, obviously, above Justin Fields, but... You need Andy Dalton to start in New England, and you need Cam to start in Chicago because the offenses would be more similar, even right. though Justin Fields can flat out throw it right. from the pocket. Right. But he can run. He ran 4-4. Four, four. Right. So you, you'd have a better chance of segueing from or transitioning from Cam to Justin Fields as you would from Andy Dalton to Mac Jones. You, you see what I mean? Or I, Brian, Brian Hoyer maybe in New England. But if you look at it, Skip, look at Kansas City's offense with Alex Smith and look at Kansas City's offense with with Patrick Mahone, boy. It, it was similar because you start out with Patrick throwing from the pocket, but you start to add a little wrinkle here and a little wrinkle there because oh. his first year of starting, it was more conventional, and it went over the edge into pure Patrick along the way. Right, and then, you know, you get more deep throws. So I just think the thing is, is that, like I said, I believe Cam, because like I said, I believe Cam was a, a year further removed from surgery. He's a year, has another year under his belt in this system. So I, and plus he has more weapons to work with. So given that, Coach Belichick is going to be less lenient with the mistakes, with the turnovers, mm -hmm. with the bad play, because mm -hmm. I feel I've given you so much more than what you had the year before. Even Mr. Kraft said we couldn't expect Cam to be successful with the talent that we had around him. Yep. If Mac Jones is as good as you think he is, yes. I don't. But if he's that good, I, I would start him from day one, opening day. But, but just, just let him go because don't stunt his growth. Don't, don't. John Elway don't, didn't start opening day. I Steve DeBerg did. Did he? Yes. Who's, who, whose idea was that? Dan Reeves, I guess. Did Joe start opening day? Because if I'm not mistaken, Steve DeBerg was there too. I don't remember. He did start a bunch of games yeah. his first year. Yeah, John, John ended they up were, starting like six or seven They games. were horrible. And they came to Dallas and Joe started. Guess what? And they got beat like 62 to seven. Dan Marino didn't start. David Stott, uh, uh, Strott. Wood, it might have been Woodley. 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 maybe. Yeah, Dan didn't start. Dan started ten games. But that that was the the old days yes. mentality. That that was archaic thinking when everybody said you got to sit and you got to wait. Well, Peyton sort of broke the mold. He just said they just threw him into the. But fire. they didn't have. They they removed all the veterans. Okay. They just like oh, he had no choice but to swim because they had no lifeguard. They had no veteran quarterback there, Skip, to say okay, if things go bad, you usually got to play right. your way through it. So if you throw five interceptions in a game, you okay. throw five interceptions. All right. So I'm going to go back on record with the kid that I like the best, Trey Lance. Okay. I still believe. Even though he's only 20 years of age, I think he's about to turn 21, but he okay. doesn't know if he's turned yet, but he was 20 when they drafted him. Right. I believe he was the readiest to start on day one because North Dakota State gave him so much responsibility. He set the protections. He called the audibles, the check with means, the option routes. His plate was full at North Dakota State. Mm -hmm. I get it was 2019, but he's a film junkie. I just believe his football maturity is extreme and he's another one where you're going to do so many different things with him other than what you do with Jimmy G right that I I would still cut bait with Jimmy G if somebody wants to take him and give you a two for him I would still do it no yep I, and plus Skip I think Mac Jones because he played in Sark system remember Kyle Shanahan was there in 2016 Sarkeesian comes in 17 and 18. And so, if I'm not mistaken, they had Sarkeesian because that was the offense that had gotten them to the Super Bowl, mm -hmm. had led Matt Jones to be the MVP. So, I believe he learned that system. He brought a lot of that with him back to Alabama. Okay. So, with that being said, he he understands that playing, playing in Alabama, playing in those big-time <laughs> games, Kip, it's, there's a reason why year after year, Alabama has so many guys so many teams are wanting to get Alabama guys. Coach Saban had 39 first-round draft picks since he's been back in Tuscaloosa. Okay. So that tells me that they, he knows their coach, he knows their discipline, okay. knows their study the game. All right. I got all that. I'm on record. I believe that Kyle Shanahan will get Trey Lance on the practice field. Whenever they start camp, mm -hmm. I think you'll see right away, wait a second, I really got something. Well, here. yeah. And 
I just think even though they're win now because they have a chance to be a contender next year. So you'd say, well, Jimmy G would give you a better shot. Really? Well, you, you, sure? really, you really do really need to win because you're giving up your draft picks for the next two years, and you don't want those to be top 10, top 5, top okay. 10 picks. I got so it. you definitely want to win right now. I believe they could be a playoff team with Trey Lance next year. Well, Skip, if we get out there, because this, this is going to be different, we're going to have preseason games. We're going to have mini camps a lot more conventional. Okay. At like the, How many are we going to have? Two? Probably three. Three? And it seems like, I mean, what's being reported is that they want to have three. So, okay, we're going to get an opportunity to see. Now, if Mac Jones goes out there and he outperforms Cam, well, I hope it's off. Mm. Okay. No mercy. NFL.com released their post-draft power rankings, and this should make Skip happy, at least I hope so. The Cowboys are the highest-ranked NFC East team on the list, even though they came in at number 21 overall. They're followed by the Giants at 22, Washington at 24, and the Giants at 25. So, Shannon, are you surprised by how low the NFC East is ranked and the order for No, I did historically bad last year, Skip. That was, that, was, <clears throat> that was no question the worst division in football. It might have been one of the historically worst divisions of all time in football. So I'm not surprised. But I think given what the Giants brought in, given what they're getting back, given what Washington brought in, I think the Cowboys being where they are, but I believe the Giants should be ranked higher. Mm. Um, you look at the Giants, Galladay, Kadarius Toney, um, Saquon's coming back. So he's almost like a draft pick. He's coming back off that ACL. And, and Kyle Rudolph, I just like what they've done. Um, Washington, Samuel, uh, Fist Magic, that defense is only going to get better another year under Jack Del Rio. Um, a lot, uh, uh, the Giants brought in Edge Rusher, uh, Z, mm -hmm. uh, Old, old, old Jalari. Yep. Old Jalari. Skip, you're in trouble. I feel very comfortable right now. I feel so comfortable right now I want to add another case to the bed. No. Really? Yep. Are you sure? Mm. Yep. <laughs> I do need a third swimming pool. <laughs> yeah, you do. Skip, y'all yep. not winning the division. Mm. You're not. Everything is, you know what? The thing, all, all you got to hang your hat on, everybody, all these publications, is everything is about that. It didn't matter in free agency. It didn't matter about the draft. Everything is that, 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 that. Well, Dak better be top five this year. Mm -hmm. If Dak is not top five, y'all in a heap of trouble. Well, he's being paid top one. So. <laughs> better. Live up. <laughs> so when I looked at this list yesterday, I go down, 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 and I'm thinking, okay, where are my Cowboys going to be ranked? And my guess was 15th. I really believe You thought 15th. it would be middle of the pack. Dak is back. Back in the saddle, ahead of schedule, he says. He said yesterday, if, if we had to play tomorrow, I could play tomorrow in a real football game. Mm -hmm. And I'm thinking, okay. And Stephen Jones said maybe uh, as many as 11 draft picks will make our team, most of them obviously on the defensive side of the ball. So yeah. I'm thinking new blood, fresh approach, new coordinator. I'm thinking we have to be a little better on defense, right? And I'm thinking 15th, and I get to 15, 16, 17, 18. I'm like, you're kidding me. I get to the 20s, and I'm saying, wait, I haven't seen any NFC East yet. Exactly. And I get to 21, and they pop up. There's Dak's attack right there. Right. And then 22 is your Giants. Yep. And then Atlanta sits at 23, but we go all the way to 24 to the Washington football team. And I'm saying, seriously? They made the playoffs because they obviously backed in right. by winning this bad division, <laughs> a historically bad division. And they actually they played okay in yeah. their playoff game. They, they hung right. in there. Yeah. As a matter of fact, they might have played, they played Tampa as they, tough they as played, anybody. They did. I agree with that. And Taylor Heineke, he did played himself well. Life. He played the game of his life. He, he, <laughs> it, it, was, it, it was pretty special what he did. He gave them... The, the, the toughest ride that they had mm -hmm. against, you know, and then it became Drew Brees, Aaron Rodgers, and Patrick Mahomes. And right. I think he, he scared them more than anybody right. during right. the game. Mm -hmm. Okay. So now we're back to should they all be that low in the 20s? Yeah, yeah they should. And, and here's why. <laughs> I, I love what the Giants did to make themselves better. I yeah. do. I love what Washington did to make itself better. And Washington already has a front seven on defense that is it's special, man. Yep. It is power pack. Mm -hmm. So it's it's about the quarterbacks. This division has one and one quarterback only and Dak Prescott. Are you sure? And and you could argue I'm not sure of that. Yeah, I don't know if he can so measure up. Well, I don't know if he can measure up to the biggest signing bonus ever and the most guaranteed money ever. Will you pay him? 
I didn't pay him. Jerry Jones you know, that, paid him. You, ad him. you advocated. I, well, you advocated I, for that. I, I was happy for it to be over, but I didn't think he's going to get that much money. Okay, so you did tell me, but you were rooting <laughs> against my team, so you were rooting for him to wreck my salary cap, and he well might have. No, it, but the point is, he's the only quarterback in the division. Show me a division that has worse quarterbacks than this division. Mm -mm. Maybe the AFC East, if you want to go, but it starts with Josh Allen. It's, Josh it's, Allen better okay. than anybody in this division. Okay, so is Josh Allen better than Dak? I don't think yes. so. I don't think Skip so. Don't do that. Skip, don't do that man like that. Okay. But then it's Tua. I don't have I, – I got no use for Tua. You still hang in with him, but really it's Tua. And then it's either Cam or Mac. Cam or Mac, Mac or Cam. We just debated right. that. Okay, well, and then it's Zach Wilson. I'm not the biggest fan of Zach Wilson. If you're going to throw him into the fire, I say good luck, Jets. I still, I'll take Cam over anybody in your division. Over anybody? Right now you'll take Cam Newton over Dak Prescott? I'm taking Cam. Really? He healthy. I'm well, is he? In him. Uh, yep. He, he is beaten to a pulp by all those years that he died for the cause, so to speak, in Carolina. But just because it, it used to be, Skip, the NFC East because they had Tom Brady. Josh Allen is the not AFC's, Tom yeah. the AFC. Yeah. Josh Allen is not Tom Brady, but he's exponentially better than anybody in the NFC East. Exponentially better than Dak Prescott? Yeah. Really? How many NFC Championship games has Dak gotten to? He got to one. Well, Dak has done this. He's played three playoff games at a very high level. He lost two out of the three, but he played very well in all three. Actually, what you call it should be about, he should be, he should be two and one. Because they should have beat Houston. They had Houston on the ropes. They Buffalo did. had him on the ropes, had him beat. And Deshaun finally made yes. one play, one escape, great escape. So, Josh Allen. Okay, but the rest of the division is, like, pretty shaky. But you'll, you'll still take Hold on, you make it. Oh, so, so, so what? You got... You, you made it abundantly clear, Jalen Hurts, you like Jalen Hurts over Tua. I do. I definitely do. So now it's coming, so basically now it's coming down to Zach yeah. Wilson or Fifth, Fifth Magic. Okay. But, but in the end, it's Dak living, trying to live up to the biggest pressure in, in the NFL yeah. next year, the greatest expectation because he's the highest paid yes. on bonus and guarantees. Yes. And, and then it's Daniel Jones. Neither of us have a lot of faith in no. him. And I still love Jalen Hurts, but the only thing I loved about Jalen Hurts was I told you he'll be better than Carson Wentz. And Philly came to that conclusion fairly quickly. Well, we're going to find out. Okay, we're I'm gonna not saying he's going to be a Pro Bowl player. I'm no. just saying he's better than Carson Wentz. So what happens if Carson Wentz gets his team to the playoff and okay, he was well, done? Okay, good luck with that. I'm just saying. Okay, good luck. Okay, yeah. you're going to be surprised. Okay, we'll see. But the Cowboys Hill are said, going to win this division. Didn't he, uh, you see what they did? The offensive line, mm -hmm. he got an offensive line that's way better than anything he had in Philly. Okay. And he's still deer in headlights. So you don't need to be. And his old coordinator will not, or quarterback coach Frank Reich will not be able to fix him. Frank, watch. I got, so I got you want comments. to go up to six cases? I got that. I, in fact, I will go to seven if you like to go to seven. Yeah, I'm not winning. Seven okay. from heaven. Yep, got it. You got it. Yep. Thank you. No mercy. Tomorrow, Pro Football is back with the Spring League on FS1. The season kicks off with a big doubleheader as the Alphas take on the Aviators at 7 Eastern. Then the Conquerors battle the Linemen at 10 Eastern. It all begins tomorrow night on FS1 and the Fox Sports app. I will be checking this out. Gotta love some football this time of year as well. So the Nets dropped another game to the Bucks last night, losing 124 to 118. Brooklyn was up by two heading into the final quarter, but was outscored by eight points in the final 12 minutes. However, both these recent losses occurred with no James Harden on the floor for the Nets. So many just think it won't, it won't matter come playoff time, right? It won't matter. Shannon, are these back-to-back -back losses to Milwaukee a big deal or no big deal here? Well, I'm not making a big deal out of it because I know what Giannis can do in the regular season. You don't become a two-time back-to-back MVP. MVP and not be exceptional. And Giannis has been exceptional. A lot of people scared. You don't. You look at his numbers. They're very comparable to what they were last year. He's just going. You know, they don't have that big record where you know they won like their first forty-five games and had only lost like three or four. And he was like blowing the PER uh, uh, record away. But Giannis has been unbelievable this year. He's right there, 28, 29 points a game. In the past two games, he went what forty-nine, and I think he had 33, 34 last night. So I'm not. Worried about what Giannis it does in the regular season. The question is, can he go get these numbers in the playoffs? That's when we need to see Giannis be the two-time MVP of the league, and we have yet to see that. Mm. KD and Kyrie missed some shots last night. 
they, they, they were cooking in the first three quarters. And for whatever reason, they couldn't buy a basket last night. You know, two guys that could normally make those clutch shots. So I'm not reading into too much into that. Until they get, until they're whole, which means until James Harden is getting back, that's when I'll start judging them. And it seems to me he's not coming back into the playoffs. So I'm not making a big deal out of this, Kip. And I am. I'm a Nets fan, nothing but Nets. You ain't no Nets fan, you anti-LeBron. That's true. I'll buy that. <laughs> but the point is, I believe that the Bucks now have the Nets number. Those were two significant fourth quarter collapses by the visiting Nets. And I believe they will carry over into the postseason because that was the first time I have ever watched the Milwaukee Bucks that I sat back and said they looked legit. They looked playoff legit to me. And I am now concerned about Kevin and Kyrie and their chemistry and camaraderie on the court because it did not manifest itself because they're up two last night and they allow Milwaukee to go on an 18 to one run. And Kevin was sitting out for a while. I still think he's the best player on the planet. He wound up with a nice game. He had 32 after 42 in the first game. But in the fourth quarter, he was not very good because he went, what, one of six in the fourth quarter. Kevin well, Durant. I know he I'm, didn't miss two shots, though. I, I am being... Bad to bad game, he missed shots, right? I'm being objective about Kevin Durant in ways you're never objective no, about your man. No, no, no. Skip Bayless, so, if LeBron had did what you... If okay, LeBron I am did, doing it right now. Okay. I am doing it because you are right. In the first game, while he's scoring 42 points and the, the final box looks great, he had two looks, two late looks. P.J., if we could see those two shots. These are the last two shots in the first game that they played, to, you know, a couple of nights ago. The first one, he missed to tie. And then the second look, he missed here. P.J. got there pretty quick. P.J. got a hand up right mm -hmm. in his face. But, but he had two decent looks, and he missed both of them. Then he comes in last night and start, tries to stop the bleeding. It's still a very close game. And the first shot he thinks it takes it was against Giannis, and he shoots a jumper from the left side, if we could see it. And he hits nothing but side of backboard. That you ever like, seen that, him do that? That looked like, PG, that looked like a know, playoff like, P. Play, play P. I agree. So I'm being painfully objective about my man, Kevin Durant, because he stunk in both the fourth quarters. The final box, the final line looks sensational. He averaged 35 a game in the three games against the Nets. They won the first one at home back in January. They lost these two. But see, that's not what you would have done with LeBron. Had LeBron got off to those starts mm -hmm. and did what he did, what Kevin Durant did in the fourth quarter, you would have said he gagged. You said he's not clutch. That's what you would have said. Yeah, but Kevin has always been clutch. He had two bad nights. Two bad. One was a day game on right. Sunday. So he had two so bad for the LeBron quarters. has been clutch. Okay, well, this team seems to have his number. Yeah. Seems to have Kyrie's number. And together, See? they fell, Kyrie and KD with no James, fell to seven and eight. I keep telling you, that James, make not it, impressive. I told you, James, make it go, Skip. Okay. Well, James, make this thing well, go. They need a pure. True but point guard. I don't want you to don't tweet no more KD with mm -hmm. Cole. Don't do that. Say he choked like oh, you would have so said. Don't worry about what I see. Now, now. Yeah, I see yeah, all my I see everything. Yeah. But don't work. do that. Would don't he, you talk about no Kevin Durant with Cole. I was just yeah. objective about my guy in ways you never we are objective about your guy. I'm always objective. Yeah. About all right, guys, out. I want to hear your thoughts on this. Guys, Seahawks receiver DK Metcalf is known for his speed on the football field, yes, but now the wide receiver is lacing up for another team. Metcalf is slated to run the 100 meter this weekend for USA track and field at an event that is a precursor to the Olympic trial. So Shannon, I got to ask you, do you give him any shot at winning here or making it? Be nice. No. Mm. Be nice. There, Skip, there's levels to speed, just like there's levels to anything. Football speed is one thing. Track speed is something entirely, entirely different. I'm going to be surprised if he run a 10, 600 meters. I'll be shocked. Well, that would be great. I'd be shocked. <laughs> Skip, okay. these guys run, they get, I mean, probably this is the first, maybe the first or second meter of the season. They're probably going to be somewhere around 10 flat, maybe 9, 9, 8, 10 flat, 10, 1. He's 6'4, 230. Exactly. Okay. Too stiff. In, in high school, he was a long jumper and a, and hurdler. a hurdler. Okay. Yeah. And, and his, his hurdle time was 14, 8. Do you understand what that... I do. No, no. I, I used to watch Herschel Walker in off-seasons while he was a Dallas yeah. Cowboy running indoor meets at the, uh, the yeah. 60. Yeah. He could run the 60. He was probably 6'2", 220, yes. 25. Yes, Herschel could run, yeah. He could fly. Yes. Legit speed. Yes. I've seen guys run. Sam Grady, who won the silver medal in the 84 Olympics. I've seen speed. Lorenzo Daniels, who's 1987. I've seen guys that can run. Mm. 
That's fast for a football player. That ain't fast for a track guy. Well, you got to admire his guts. No. Even if he's delusional. So, right? if, I, so if I get into the ring, even though I got no chance of winning, you going to give me credit just for having guts? I would. No. I would. No. I would. My the place. Ring? I know my place. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, what you think he runs? I say he, I say he doesn't break 10-5. Give me a number quick. All right. We're after to wait see. That yeah. is it for Undisputed. I'll be watching. The Herd is on right now. Have a great day. My case